Oh crap. Oh. Okay, apparently things aren't still quite working right, which is fine. Um, but, but I thought I pushed the wrong button. Hey, it does work. It, of course, you just have to be focused on it because OBS is throwing a problem. Uh, like it has been. But hello everyone, Vasive here. Welcome back to some more Corpse Factory, I believe. If the internet's is to believe, to be believed. Um, the time to beat this game is around seven and a half hours uh, on on average. Hello, so, um, we should be finishing up this game tonight. That's the plan anyway. So, because we're at like six hours in and we have a three hour stream. So, we'll figure out what's going on there. Actually, you know what? The, the blur actually looks kind of cool. I might, I might keep this idea that I got going on here. How's it going, Space? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, look at that face. Hold on. Yeah, this is this is important. Look at that face. Oh, I just sleepy puppy. Been sleeping all day. I took her to the office today. She's getting old, so I don't like being without her. I think I have some sort of a, a separation. I think I've I think I've actually developed like some sort of a separation anxiety thing from her. Why does that light get so glaringly bright when I switch to the scene all of a sudden? Um, and the reason why I think that is because I, I literally, every time I have to go somewhere, I'm like, can Jada come? <laughs> That's what's crossing my head. And if it's no, I try to avoid doing it. Like, oh crap, I gotta go to the bank or something. Can Jada come? No. And then my brain goes, we'll just go to an ATM. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. No. Wait, is it just that scene? Tell me you guys can hear that. Can you hear the, the overlay? Because I cannot. You can hear it? Fucking see. Um, that's what I was going to go into too, is the... I fixed... Dance for me. That was fixed last night. I stayed up for an extra two hours last night fixing all... Also, why did the fade stop? Um, fixing all the, uh... The audio problems that OBS decided to be like, Haha, you guys want this is gonna be funny? Uh, you no longer have any audio sources. Um, so I went through and I fixed all these and the Twitch Alerts one was working. Last night. I checked it. And now it's not. What the hell? Um, so I don't know what's going on there. Also, I didn't hear if it fucking forgot. It didn't for it couldn't have forgot my audio sources because I see them named uh, what I named them new this time. I see the audio moving. You guys said you heard it. So I have I have no idea what uh, is going on, but OBS is fucking up my audio sources, which is fantastic. Um, also, oh, I heard Powder Toast, man. What am I talking about? I, I did hear, um, login sounds. How come I didn't hear spaces? Space, why don't I hear your, did I hear your login sound? I did. I heard a hello, friend. I'm sorry. I forgot. Anyways, Rooster, thank you so much for the tier three at 27 months or 27 months at tier three. You absolute legend. JJ, go get for you. Here you go. Go get this goalie. Oh, oh, get him. I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a picture up on the Discord of uh, her, her under my, my desk at work. So that, that was always fun. I, I forgot what I was talking about. Anyways, we're going to be playing some more Corpse Factory. I think we're going to end it tonight. Um, I don't know. So please let me know if there's other audio issues and all that good stuff because it was a freaking nightmare. It just decided to stop working for some reason last night. It literally, like I started up stream and... Zero audio sources. Also, why am I so tiny? Like, I fixed this yesterday. But apparently it's broken again. It's, uh, I guess closing OBS last night didn't save some of the stuff I had. Because that's, that was the original size of the webcam anyways please let me know if you guys see anything goofy or weird um uh, obviously i would greatly appreciate it um oh you know what you you know why you didn't hear this this one was my bad this was this was my dumb dumb 
Hold on. Where's the fuck? Give me this here. Hold on. There it is. Oh, it's backwards. Why is the why is the fucking gif off? And why is it so quiet? Oh, I forgot. Why is it so quiet? Is it really quiet for you guys? It's really quiet for me. Dance for me. Oh, dance for me. Ah, got it. Love it. Like, that was... That's normal sound for you? That was... Barely able to hear. And also, I don't know why the GIF was all backwards, but apparently there's more issues, so... <sighs> we love it, right? But how are you guys doing? What's new? What's crazy? What's exciting? Mm. Oh, that's right. We're starting off in the mall. I wonder if we're going to meet... Oh, I forgot her name. Emmy? Ellie? I think it's Emmy. The weekend is here, and despite my desire to stay inside, my apartment with the doors locked and windows closed, I find myself at the mall shopping for a new phone charger. You're melting, ready for fault? Same, dude. Do you have AC out where you're at? Because I know, uh... Um... <laughs> the state above you has no AC. My current charger gave up on me at midnight, and now my phone is running dangerously low on life power. I tried plugging into different outlets. I tried plugging into my laptop, but nothing. But nothing I did gave my device even the slightest amount of charge. Also, if you guys haven't seen the latest posts I put in the freaking Discord in the last channel, holy shit, if you need some serotonin, go watch that. Like, it, it, send the chaos in that Twitch channel is, puts me into hysteria. Like, and one of the, the laughers, Froggy, she, she gets into, I, I wish I could get into laugh fits like her. Like I used to. Oh my God, it's so good. And I love Art Gem, or er, Art Gem, Art Gun. I absolutely adore them. They're fucking, they, they very, rarely speak. When they do, it's very soft, like very soft spoken and it's kind of hard to hear. But I love their model. And uh, Taka, he's, He's like the, the the lead show person or something. And the, the banter that they have between each other is hilarious. Oh, but it looks like he has different guests this time. Interesting. But, oh my god. It was so freaking hilarious, dude. There was a new one that came out today about... I, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Just Go follow Taka's Twitter and they post clips of the craziness that happens on the stream but holy crap it's hysterical and it made me think like froggy or videl very much has froggy energy and i was like videl you need to get yourself a vtuber and uh that'd be fantastic anyways um i thought for sure i had a spare charger lying around but i turned turned my apartment inside out trying to find it couldn't even find the right type in my drawer of burner phones so either the charger has died which is the best case scenario my phone has become faulty I hope the latter is not the case because I really can't afford to purchase a new one. Getting it repaired is out of the question. I refuse to hand it over to somebody for a day or two and go without it. So I'm hedging my bets on the issue being with the charger. If I can buy a new one, all my problems should be solved. Oh, I'm in some chat. Hold on. You took next week off and Passive Exile is starting a new league tomorrow. Nice! So you're just going to be playing a lot of uh, Passive Exile all week? Also, ah, I got my hands on a PS5. Well, not technically yet. Um, but like six months ago, I signed up for Amazon's and PlayStation's like, hey, add yourself to the list and get added to an exclusive like email chain list when next time stuff becomes available. And you have like Amazon, I think you had like 72 hours or something to buy it. Um, but PlayStation was like, no, no, it's an event. You get on a waiting list and you just sit there and wait to see if you get your turn. And I did. So I get a, a Horizon Zero Dawn bundle uh, coming in and it shipped the same day. 
like the same day the event happened and I placed the order and you had you had 10 minutes to get place your order once you got in um and unfortunately I couldn't put it on like PayPal credit which because then I would have had six months to pay it off but I, that sucked anyway um but I got one and then I got the notification I was like okay I just I've heard stuff like this happens and then they put too many out and you know some orders get canceled because they ended up not having enough I was like oh come on please please work and then I got a notification that the order was successful and then uh my credit card was gonna be changed or charged and then uh later that evening I got a notification that it got shipped so exciting things come to the channel one ps5 um two uh we're gonna be able to play horizon uh forbidden west did I call it I think I called it wild west oops uh don't tell Moira and um that means like we could possibly get de the demon souls remaster um the newer spider-man looks kind of cool new god of war comes out i think next month so perfect um and there was another game too but what i'm super excited about is that means i can finally jailbreak my ps4 and get a bloodborne 4 or bloodborne 4 a bloodborne 60 fps randomizer so I'm super looking forward to that. That that's been on my mind for so long. And then uh I saw some recent posts of an Elden Ring uh randomizer that's come out. Apparently it's a little more difficult to plug in. Um or it's easier to plug in, but there's a lot more settings, so it makes it more difficult. I don't know. There's something with it. And so that was like, okay, well maybe that can scratch my itch itch because there's a lot of stuff in Elden Ring, but it's open world, so you could get in a really bad situation and stuff but uh i'm super looking forward to a bloodborne randomizer um i wonder i don't think crowd control has a uh, bloodborne support i'll have to look into that because if crowd control has bloodborne support that could be hilarious have a randomizer with crowd control with you guys messing with me that could be hilarious we could try that What do, you, what do you guys think? Does that sound cool? Might stream some. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw you streamed um the other day at like 9 or 10 in the morning or something. Uh, but I was not awake yet. Your last stream had low audio? Hey, I remember those days. Hell, we had a no audio day yesterday. For like the first five minutes or something. But thankfully, uh, literally, I looked over at OBS and I saw no bars moving at all. And then space literally responded is like, I don't hear you. So that's, that was unfortunate. Um, but if you need help or if you have questions, dude, you know, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to lend some helping hand if I can. Oh, I've been rambling. Also, Yuri, what's going on, my dude? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I didn't welcome, welcome you. Jay, there, I was in the middle of a rant. Cookie for you. Landed right in front of her, her nose. Let's see if she wakes up and gets it. <laughs> This is what I tell myself as I skirt through the crowded mall, dodging left and right to avoid careless people trying to bump into me. Excuse me. I know there's an electronic store. Excuse me. Around here somewhere. Even a discount store will probably have a budget charger that will still fit my device. I just want to find what I'm looking for and get out of this place. Or get out of this place. As I blindly navigate the area, I think back to last night when I first noticed my phone was no longer charging. I'd been browsing through the obituary newsfeed, searching desperately for any sign of my latest victim's demise. All right. The twins. No clues came up. There were countless new obituaries, of course. This is a big country and people die every day, but very few matched the description of my victim. The obituaries that did match had photos included, but none of them looked remotely like the twin woman. It was dead end after dead end. I might have just I might have to just accept the fact that this late Lady's request will go unfulfilled. But accepting it makes me angry. Very, very angry. I find myself stomping through the mall more often than simply walking. A few people glance at me, but I don't pay heed. I wanted that woman to die. I wanted her twin sister to rejoice or despair at the fate that befell her own flesh and blood. I wanted her to feel the fear of seeing her own corpse in a photo. I wanted her to feel the cold and clammy hands of death tugging at her skirt. 
whispering to her, inviting her to spiral down and down and down and down and down and down and down. I was being lazy and just used the NVIDIA quick cast thing. Oh, yeah, see, I've never used that. Spiral down and just die. To give up, to die, to spiral down, to die. To spiral out of control. I wanted her to die. I wanted her to die. I wanted her to die. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely suffering a mental break. Spiral down, down, down. Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? My head is foggy. My sense is blurred. Mom's spaghetti. My hot, my face hot, my hands cold. I repeat the mantra through gritted teeth. Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? Why didn't you die? Are you saying that out loud? I fall to my knees and scream at the top of my lungs. Oh shit! Ah, why didn't you die? The story just took a wild turn. Why didn't you fucking die? What the hell? Damn, she's having a full meltdown. Can we get a security guard down here, please? Is she going to kill somebody? Mom, I'm scared. <laughs> I'll kill her. I'll find her. I'll find her. I'll find her. Okay, maybe you need to go back on those pills. I taste blood in my mouth. My tongue is numb. My teeth chatter. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll find that twin bitch. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her myself. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. Okay. All right. That's enough. Going hot to 11. A strong hand pulls at my shoulder. My face hits the ground hard. My arms are restrained behind my back. And all I can see is my blurry vision is the check in my blurry vision is the checkered tile floor at the mall. You're coming with me. Always take your meds, kids. Yes, right? My limp form is tugged backwards and my head lolls to the side. I shut my eyes and let the blackness envelop me. All right, mouse, got to move. A singing cold ice pack bites against my cheek and rudely awakens me from my stupor. I don't know where I am. I don't remember why I'm here. But the sudden chill spreading across my face is nice. Almost soothing. This doesn't look like mall security. I realize that somebody, a tall man, is holding the ice pack to my cheek and he motions for me to take, a, to take hold of it myself. I reach a sluggish hand to grab the ice pack and continue to press it against my skin. Is this Koji? No, it can't be. The man walks around the chair I'm seating in. I'm seated in and stands behind a simple wooden desk to face me. Well, this could be the police station, but why would she be in the room with the monitors? You can imagine my surprise when I recognized you. Oh shit! It's Kenji. Opening my mouth in an attempt to talk causes a dull ache in my jaw. I apologize for treating you so roughly. The only reason I haven't called for the police is because I want to give you the opportunity to calm down and explain yourself. This guy, I know him, but from where? Oh, of course. It took me some time because I'm not used to seeing the security uniform. This is Kenji Oga Ogawa, the very same guy who lives in my apartment building. The nice guy who greets me in the stairwell. Father of sweet little Momo. Mr. Ogawa? Ah, so you are completely out of it. Where am I? This is the mall security office. You caused quite a scene, Nariko. A scene? Hmm. You don't remember. Well, give it some time. I'm sure it'll come back to you. I try to think hard about the circumstances that led me here. I remember something about visiting the mall to buy a phone charger, but I don't think I ever found the store I was looking for. Some kind of anger or fear or something. Some familiar primal emotion got the better of me. Listen, Nariko. I've always thought you were a sweet girl. And Momo looks up to you, you know. Please, tell me that you're just not feeling well. Please tell me the things you were screaming aren't true. The things I was screaming? An image of a smiling woman flashes in my mind. 
a twin woman with beautiful features and lovely hair. Victim. One who didn't die. That's right. I remember now. I lost my cool. I became so overwhelmed with frustration that she didn't die. I must have broken down and unleashed my anger here, right in the mall. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. This is all because I went outside. I went somewhere I don't normally go. I'm usually fine about going to the office. It's familiar. The convenience store is fine too. In fact, my whole meticulously planned morning routine rarely bothers me. But the shopping mall? What was I thinking? I haven't been keeping up with my medication. Even if I was on top of it, going somewhere out of my comfort zone is always a risk. I need to start regulating my intake. Taking a pill or two every other day or when I feel like it isn't going to help me. Skipping days at a time and just popping a few in my mouth when I need to leave the house isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. I need to follow the guidelines. I need to keep a strict schedule on when I can take it or when to take what. Damn it, Noriko. I'm supposed to be calm at all times. Stoic, unflinching Noriko. What the fuck am I doing, Noriko? You still look a bit flustered. Ugh. Do you want to lie down for a bit before talking to me? No. Okay. Well, do you want to explain what happened? No. Huh. I never took you for a troublemaker. Please, Noriko. I'm begging you. Don't make me call the police. You were screaming about killing somebody. You were... manic. You can't just act like that in public. You scared a hundred people just trying to make their way through the mall. You scared me. A knock at the door causes Kenji to flinch. Ogawa, may I enter? Ah, uh, yes. Please come in, Mr. Fujikawa. The metal door separating the security room from the real world opens with a screech. We know the name Fujikawa. Is that, is that Shinya's dad? Is it Shinya Fujikawa? I don't remember. A broad, intimidating man enters the small room and displaces all, all the air inside. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. Yeah! Uh, Shinya's dad is a detective. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's calm now. Indeed. The man who seems to be some sort of a detective looks me up and down with a sour expression. Miss, your name? I don't answer him. I see. Sir, if I may, this is Nariko Kurosawa. She's an acquaintance. Is that so? An acquaintance? Well, that speaks volumes about your personal life, Ogawa. Sir. Leave us be. I wish to talk to her. Yes, Mr. Fujikawa. Kenji bows, his grim smile cracking under fear as he exits the room. The detective, or whatever he is, towers over me. He pulls out a badge from inside his jacket and flashes it at me. My name is Fujikawa. I'm a detective, an investigator for the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. What's his accent? You must understand that we take death threats very seriously in the police force. Huh? Excuse me, but Kenji said he didn't call the police. Kenji? Ah, Ogawa. Well, never mind what he said. I was here already in regards to another case. I happened to witness your little outburst. Oh boy. Ogawa was kind enough to allow me a moment to interview you personally. Right. So, what do you want to talk about? Your little, uh, event. Listen, if I were in your shoes, I'd drop the sardonic act. I have reasonable grounds to arrest you here and now. His voice drips with pure venom. This guy isn't choking around. I squirm a little in my seat and remove the cold ice pack from my face. Now, Miss Kurosawa, would you please explain to me who you are threatening to kill? A wave of dread washes over me as the reality, reality of my current situation starts to sink in. If I don't fly straight and narrow here, I might be in a world in for a world of trouble. I apologize for my actions. I wasn't feeling like myself earlier. I regrettably skipped my medication recently. <laughs> the medication excuse. I'll play along. Were you hallucinating then? No, sir. Not exactly. I need to come up with something, and quickly, or I'm not getting out of here anytime soon. See? I recently had an altercation with a co-worker about a guy we both like. Oh, God. 
She didn't put his name together. The detective rolls his eyes at me. Go on. I guess I was a little upset about our fight, and really, we're actually quite good friends, so I think a combination of that and missing my medication caused me to get a little too upset and say some things I don't really mean. Mm hmm. And how do I know you're not dangerous? Are you carrying any weapons, Miss Kurosawa? Weapons? No. Just these course, dashing good looks. I see. Well, you're going to have to permit me to search your belongings. You understand that I can't allow you to leave until I have established that you're not a threat, right? The detective lurches forward and roughly grabs my handbag. Hey! He tears it open and rummages around inside. I'm somewhat relieved that I'm traveling lightly today. I even left the two books I'm reading at home. He finds nothing of interest in the bag, save for the one thing. My phone. He taps the screen, toggles the power button, and smacks the phone against his open palm. Is this broken? I realize that the last off battery power must have finally drained. I'm probably lucky for that fact. If he found certain things on my phone, I might be in trouble. It's not like I keep corpse photos on there. That's what my collection of burner phones is for. But there are certain things that would be incriminating if they fell into the, my hands. Or his hands. I know he's catalog or chat log with Kojiro for starters. And then there are those images of Aoi and Tomoe and the famous singer that had her phone hacked and her private photos uploaded to the net. Aoi knows I have her photos. She's okay with it. Tomoe doesn't know about hers. That would be hard to explain. The singer, on the other hand, was part of a big scandal a few months ago. Probably half of Japan has seen her photos. Still, I'd rather keep my personal matters completely private. I don't want this asshole looking into my affairs. Wait, Battery is dead, lewd photos? Where is your charger then? I don't have one with me. He grunts and throws the phone at me, and I barely manage to catch it with my brittle, skeletal, clumsy Wait fingers. Here. I need to make a call. He leaves the room unceremoniously, and I hear the scraping shriek of a steel deadbolt locking the formidable door behind him. I breathe out and try to calm my nerves. I look down at the phone in my hand and see my mirror image counterpart peering at me in the black refraction. Refraction. Reflection. I don't look as good as I normally do. My makeup is smudged, which is strangely becoming more and more common for me. I think I've gained some weight. My gaunt face seems fuller somehow, and my prominent cheekbones are softer. This girl's staring back at me. She's not wholly familiar. <gasps> Winter! How's it going, friend? Welcome to stream. Everyone, go follow Winter. She just hit affiliate, which is super exciting. Everyone congratulate. Cheers, hypes. Yes, give it. How you doing, friend? Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Your VTuber model's cute, by the way. I didn't know you were uh, going to be doing VTube stuff. The girl's staring back at me. She's not wholly familiar. Is this Noriko Kurosawa? Is this Corpse Girl? I look like some aberration, some sickening concoction of myself and some person I don't fully recognize. I don't understand how I could have gained weight. I've been eating less. Maybe the canned coffee I consume religiously can contains more calories than I realize. I'll need to cut down immediately. A sour taste rolls around on my tongue and I swallow it reluctantly. I feel ill at the sight of myself. The steel door swings open and Fujikawa stomps in like an angry toddler. <sighs> The precinct claims you don't have a prior record, Miss Kurosawa. That's good news for you, I'm sure. But it's a fucking pain in the ass for me. You want to learn more? You need to make outfit. You Wait a minute. So did you commission the um the VTuber model and the rigging, and then uh you're gonna uh do edits and modifications to it yourself? That's awesome, dude. Oh yeah some big brain stuff is this an rpg no it's uh it's more of a visual interactive novel um out of the six hours i've played i've literally had two choices so I, i'm pretty sure it's just a visual novel i did both i added a booth unity thing and figured out the rigging myself dude you did that yourself dude you're freaking brilliant that's awesome. Hell yeah. I don't know if you saw, um, I posted a thing. I, I brought this up earlier. I posted in the discord in the laugh channel. There's a, 
a VTuber I just stumbled, stumbled across. Um, but he has like, he and his friends have like some chibi models of their VTuber and just chaos ensues. And um, one of the people that uh, he's interacting with is the, is the artist and the rigger for all all the stuff and holy shit they're fucking that video alone is a massive dose of serotonin if you need it. I'm I'm seriously I'm saving it into my like serotonin boost folder injection meat into the brain meats area because it's fucking hysterical. Holy crap. I watched like an hour past where I did the timestamp and it's still oh it's just so good so funny is it creepy um yeah kind of there's some heavy themes into it uh if you've seen death note it feels very death notey there's a there's a lot of death note nods to it um yeah there's command and you got it i believe you were I, you might be in it already if not you know that'll take you there and or if you are it'll just take you there um, if not, then you can join. But I think I recall seeing your name in it. I don't remember. I don't know. I flinched at his apparent anger and recoiled slightly in my chair. You're free to go. However, I remember you. Another incident like this, and I'll have you in for a psychological assessment faster than you can blink. That explains her going crazy for raisins. Why she go for crazy for raisins? Yeah, the, the second spelling. <laughs> I can do nothing but nod at a, as a wave of relief washes over me. <sighs> get your things oh, and get raisins is bad reasons. Got gotcha. you. Oh, for the love of God, go eat something. You look like a starving child. Fujikawa spins on his heel with force and once again leaves me sitting alone. I take a minute to collect my thoughts before pe picking up my belongings, shoving them into my handbag. As I leave the security office, I spot Kenji standing outside the outside the door. He bows his head meekly. Take care, Noriko. Oh, I like him. Yeah. He doesn't lift his head as I walk away. So in this scenario, are you Kira or L? She's Kira. But she doesn't actually perform the death. Okay, so a little, just a little quick catch up. She has a website that she runs called Corpse Girl. Uh, people can su submit a photo and a phone number of someone they want dead. And then essentially she goes, um, she gets the request. She does some photo. She goes, looks up some dead bodies, um, and does photo manipulation to take the victim's head or the face or effects or whatever, and puts it on the deceased corpse's body and then sends that photo with a future timestamp to the victim. And apparently she's been doing this for a while, but. Uh, three people have died now um but I, th I think she said she's done like hundreds or something before but only three people have officially died one um was a suicide one was a coincidence and one was an accident or one is possibly a coincidence and one was an accident and right now i think we're experiencing some sort of a mental break um from last episode from yesterday that we've noticed she's kind of like you've seen death note she's kind of hit that point um where she uh she's getting upset when something doesn't go their way um and she did her latest victim uh hasn't died yet because she checks obituaries and stuff and she just had an outburst in the mall so that's why she was with the police yet she does some e-girl gothic photoshop yeah it's art exactly yeah no problem it's um the story's interesting um also her photo showed up in Co corpse girl's website um last stream too someone requested her death um and so some theories i have is there, her her best friend's name is Owie, and I absolutely adore her. And I have a feeling something bad is going to happen to her, and I'm not okay with that. But I have a working theory that I think 
Um, we were led to believe that her co-worker, who's a bitch, uh, submitted the photo, but it felt too convenient. Um, and like, before that thing with the co-worker happened, she had kind of like an argument with her friend. And, um, I think her friend submitted it. Um, because also Owie showed up in, I don't know, uh, the preface, not the preface. I don't know. It's like, the, it's the game before the actual game. It's, it's, it's the demo, but it's included in the game. It's like the, the pre -ch chapter or something. Um, she showed up at the very end there too. And she knew about Corpse Girl. So we're, we're, we're putting things together. But I love Owie and I will do anything to protect her. She's soft and gentle and just, I love her very much. So much for Stoic Unflinching Noriko. Remember Stoic, un, uh, Stoic Unflinching Noriko? I like her red stripe in her hair though. It's pretty cool. This is her. Weak of flesh and weak of will. Weak, weak, weak. Noriko can't control her emotions. Noriko can't face the world outside with her help of peppy pink pills. That's the other thing we just found out. Um, I think she might have uh, like agoraphobia. Um, she also definitely has some social anxiety. Um, but she has something that's requiring her to... That she has a prescription med to take. So I think she also has uh, like paranoia. Maybe schizophrenia? But I don't think so. I think it's more of like uh, intense paranoia. But we're figuring it out. And, I, and Owie, I think, has uh, actual clinical OCD. Um, we tried to get her a job because she worked in a, a maid shop. If you're familiar with J Japan and stuff and the, the lewd maid shop things, she works there. She has problems that's happening there with customers. Um, we got her a new job with a, a friend co-worker who we mentioned to. Um, he got her an interview or got her a job without any interview. She didn't show up for work. Um, so now the guy that recommended her, that's our friend is now kind of in hot water. It, it's just a, it's a freaking mess, dude. Yeah. The maid cafes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Norco, Norco, Norco. She keeps calling herself that I keep calling myself that, but I'm, I'm more than that, more than her. I'm corpse girl. I'm bigger than the frail body before me. See, she's going full light like Yagami. Uh, I'm bigger. I'm bigger. Whoa. The art just changed, right? She's got that cut thing going on right here. You see that? Is she putting her on her makeup to make herself look like corpse girl? Why do my looks matter in the grand scheme of things? What does my ego matter? I want to be beautiful. Sin. Gorgeous. Oh, God. It's going full doki doki. Kojiro called me gorgeous. It made me feel good. Also, I've had some really dumb slip ups because she's she has a bit of an ego sometimes. And uh, we've definitely put ourselves into situations where people probably can figure out what we, uh, that we're corpse girl now. But that doesn't matter. None of it matters. Corpse girl matters. She will succeed and the world will continue to spin. I need to gain weight or lose weight. I need to look like Owie with her small frame and cute features. The art keeps changing and that bust that's too hard to look away from. Also, we have a crush on Aoi. I need to look like Tomoe. No! Tomoe is the girl we hate. She's kind of a bitch. With her fuller figure, her obscene fashion sense, and those oddly beautiful eyes that she doesn't deserve. She punched us. She, she is. Uh, Tomoe assaulted us. I need to look like Yuriko. With her bad haircut, terrible piercings, and trashy clothes. Who's Yuriko? I need to look like mother. Is, it, is Yuriko my sister? Ah! The, uh, the art is like fading and changing on itself. I need to look like mother who is just like me and Yuriko combined. Okay, yeah, Yuriko is my sister. But with vacant eyes that used to be sparkling and clear, but now just plays over whenever you try to talk to her. I need to look like Noriko with her dark hair and her intense gaze and her an unhealthy, acceptable frame. Also, she gets off on some really weird shit. Like people dying kind of stuff. 
and people's misfortune. It's and it's not like haha. No, she like has full body, full body O's. It's like it's really fucking weird. I don't need to look like this skeleton, this living corpse. Uh oh. See now, yeah, I think she's putting on makeup to look like corpse girl. I don't need to look like this physical embodiment of hunger and longing and lust and fear and stress and anxiety and uncertainty and ambition and exhaustion. Uh oh, I'm about to have another break. I curse at the mirror and spit on my own reflection. You. I clench my fists until my nails dig and tear and pierce my flesh, letting blood trickle between my knuckles and drip down to the carpet. She's going, um, have you guys seen Claymore? Another good one where, um, I think her name's Ophelia, like number four or something. I don't know. She's a high ranking one of the Claymores and she's nuts. Uh, she likes, she likes going after, um, uh, altered beings, whatever the, the super uh, awakened beings, right? And um, at some point, she she goes through a mental br break and uh, she transforms into an awakened being. Um, and she's like, when she falls on the ground, she's like, "Fuck you, fuck you!" That's what she's doing right now. There was not a fighting mini game. Um, she literally just fucking sucker punches right in the stomach, and because she thinks that. We like the guy that she was going after. It is it was just a whole drama shit show. You'll see Tomoe and you'll hear me you'll, you'll hear me groan because I absolutely can't stand her. I don't want to be you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Yeah, see her her uh, ego is coming in. But I am you. I am Corpse Girl. It's what I always wanted. It's that sense of belonging that I always thought. It's that feeling of home that I reclaimed after home was lost. After mother moved and Yuriko got put on ice and after I found this apartment that felt so strange at first. Is our sister dead? This is who I am. I love your hair. Your eyes. I didn't know our sister was dead. I love you. Don't ever leave me. Don't leave. The creepy music. I raised two fingers to my mouth and kissed them gently then pressed them against the mirror. I love you. Okay, that was fine. That was normal. And then the music spelled back to normal. What the fuck, dude? To my absolute delight, I woke up this morning feeling really refreshed. I was worried that my temporary incarceration at the mall would continue to stress me out today. Thankfully, my fears were unfounded. I spent the early morning cleaning up my room. I had to use some elbow grease to get a few specks of blood out of the carpet and to clean a bit of lipstick off my mirror. I even took my medication with a tall glass of water. Good. And I didn't skip the pills I don't like this time. It'll be, it'll, it will be some time before I feel stable, maybe even a few weeks, but the fact that I'm already taking steps forward has done wonders for my mood. Good. Today's the day to stay inside and work on me. I can't have another incident like yesterday. I can't break down in public and put myself at risk. I can't break down at home again and feed all my insecurities and anxieties. I need to be strong. A corpse girl. For me. With my room now clean, I just spend a little time. I decide to spend a little time tidying the rest of my apartment. As I work, I make myself a new mental checklist of commitments. Norco's promise list, if you will. Commitment number one: I'm not going to lose my shit if I have if a victim doesn't meet their demise. You're writing this down. <sighs> just because that twin woman didn't kill herself doesn't mean I'm a failure. I had three successes before her, and I'll have more successes again. I just need to try harder work harder, refine my methods, and keep moving forward. And I'm not at a dead end yet. I have a trick up my sleeve, after all. Kojiro's conne connection to the morgue may very well be the ace I need to win. Did she write all that down? Like an idiot. Commitment number two. I'm going to improve myself. I won't say that I'll fix myself. I'm not, I'm not broken. Not yet. I'm going to improve. I'll keep up with my medication. I'll keep up with my social life. That means keeping in touch with the few friends I have. Aoi, Shinya, and even Tom Tomoe. I'm going to eat a little more. Not much more, because I want to stay slim, but enough to give me more energy, more motivation. I don't want to be weak anymore. Commitment number three, the last one. I'm going to get over Aoi. I love her. I've loved her since high school. In those days, she always stood by me. My insecurities and anxieties never pushed her away. She knew what I was going through, what I still go through, and she could relate to me. She has her own compulsions and anxieties to deal with, so I can't lean on her like I used to. 
Instead, it's my turn to help her out. But I will move on from obsessing over her. She isn't ready for a relationship, and she explained all the reasons why when she rejected me so long ago. Clinging to the hope that one day we'll be together isn't good for my current state. I need to be moving on, moving forward. I need to let go. She is, and always will be, my dearest friend. I'll always love her, but I will let her remain as simply my friend, and I will find someone else to call a lover. This last commitment really makes me feel like a weight has been lifted off my chest. Instead of, of obsessing over Aoi, spending countless, spending countless nights lying in bed looking at her photos, thinking about her at odd hours of the day, instead of all that, I'll be able to move on. Even if it takes some time, I'll find someone who wants to be with me. There are plenty of fish in the sea, as they say. There's also a lot of trash in the ocean. I can't say there's anyone in particular I have my eye on just yet. My social circle is pretty limited after all. Hmm. I have a lot of questions. I think they're bringing up Owie right now to kind of like get you, get her back in your head. So you start thinking about her and like, oh, good for us. We're moving on, which is great. But I think they're going to come slap us in the face when we find out that Aoi requested our death. Shinya is a guy I'm simply not interested in. There's no spark there, and there, there never will be. Tomoe, Tomoe, as irritating as I find her, is oddly alluring to me. I don't like her clothes, or makeup, or the whole aesthetic she has built for herself, but some part of me would kill to spend a passionate night with her. That's fine. <laughs> we all have those. Like, I don't like anything about you, but you know what? That could be fun. And there's Kojiro. That's weird. That's weird, awkward, strange alien creature that I just can't wrap my head around. He said I'm gorgeous. He really said that. But he's too weird. I feel like he's the kind of guy that would sock you and stab you if you ever broke up with him. For now, I can't think of anyone. I would seriously, or I would seriously pursue. But I'll give it some time. I have all the time in the world. I like Kenji. He's cool. Kojiro's not too bad either. He just, yeah, he's kind of weird. I find myself smiling as I finish tidying up the apartment. Having a nice, clean place to live really does help to lift the spirits. Unfortunately, I still haven't managed to get rid of that lingering scent of mold that always wafts around. It's a musty odor that seems to be ingrained in the very walls of the apartment building for at least as long as I've lived here. I know it's not coming from my apartment because it's pretty easy to smell from downstairs too. And as far as I can tell, my place is completely mold free. I might not be the best at cleaning, but if nothing else, I keep disgusting mold out of my home. Still, the occasional odor aside, my place is clean and cozy and, and clean and cozy now. I lay down on the couch and stretch my body, letting my top muscles stiffen and then relax. The day is still early and it feels good that all my chores are already complete. Hell yeah, dude. The icing on the cake is the fact that Corpse Girl has two new requests sitting patiently in her inbox. Damn. I logged in earlier and saw them, but decided to sort out my cleaning first. Good for you. Now I can reward myself by spending the rest of the day working on the new requests. I can hardly contain my excitement as at the prospect. Two requests to work on is better than I could hope for, and I'm sure at least one of these new victims will fall. My positive attitude will go a long way to ensuring my success this time. Unable to restrain myself anymore, I snatch up my laptop from its charging point next to the couch. I flip open the lid and gaze at the photos that I downloaded earlier. My two new victims, fresh blood. Hello. The first is an older male, maybe in his 50s, typical business type businessman type. He might as well be a clone of every other nondescript man you see on the subway at the supermarket on TV. If I had to guess, I'd take a leap and say his miserable wife wants him out of the picture. Maybe she's unhappy with her their finances, or she's having an affair, or she's just tired of his clone face and his clone personality. Regardless, someone wants this unremarkable man removed from the face of this unremarkable world. The second victim is much, much more in interesting. Two things strike me as noteworthy about this photo. Someone sent a letter with the photo. Firstly, the cleavage, of course. Secondly, the image is a photograph of a photograph. Yeah. Somebody has snapped a picture of an actual physical photo and uploaded it to the site. The photograph is in good condition, as though its owner values it above all else. A signature is scribbled across it in white ink. It's an autographed photo of someone who is perhaps moderately famous. I don't recognize the woman in question, and the signature is such a mess that I can't make out even a single kanji in her name. Regardless, I would be willing to bet that a disgruntled fan is requesting her death. 
If she's an idol or a singer or an actor, it wouldn't be unheard of for something like this to happen. A fanboy gets to meet her a few times, they shake hands at events, whatever. He asks her out and she politely declines. And then the obsession begins. If the fanboy can't have her, no one can. Kill her. Kill her. Yeah, that's fucked up. Well, that's the theory I slowly piece together as I examine some of the finer details of the photo. The reasons behind the request don't matter. They never matter. I'll kill them all the same. I'm going to work on the woman's photo first. I'll timestamp her photo with tomorrow's date and send it over or send it to her this afternoon. I should give her about 24 hours to give up on life and light herself on fire. Fuck. Maybe I'll do the same with the businessman. I'll give him a timestamp to set 24 hours from now from when I send the photo. It'll be kind of fun to schedule two deaths to occur around the same time. It will make tomorrow a very exciting day. That also just lines up your work time for people to just keep piling evidence against you. With my goal set, I load up the database of the deceased and get to work. I'm rather proud of myself today. During my morning routine, I made sure to, to take my medication in the correct doses and I even washed it down with water. <gasps> I just put something together. So the precursor, preamble, whatever it is, the, uh, the first bit of the game. Remember the girl, Emmy, that got the photo of her death. There was an actual corpse showed up on a gurney in a body bag at her doorstep. Kojiro is going to get involved. He's absolutely going to get involved. During my morning routine, I made sure to make take my medication and the correct doses and even wash it down with water. It didn't even interfere with my strict schedule. I still managed to catch the usual train. I got to the convenience store at the usual time and I arrived at the office without a hitch. If I can keep up this dedication, this commitment to improving myself, I know I can be stronger than ever. Strong enough to fulfill Corpse Girl's ambitions. She keeps saying ambitions. What ambitions? Just killing people? I greeted both Shinya and Tomoe when I came into the office and even made small talk for a few minutes. Since the day has nearly ended now, I'm going to make an effort to chat with them again before heading home. Being social will help me get through this. That's what Aoi used to tell me anyway. At least before she stopped being social herself. It's about 5.45pm and although both of my latest victims should have killed themselves by now, I don't feel the need to obsessively check for their obituaries. Good. I have a news alert set on my phone, of course. If it uncovers anything, I'll be notified. But even if it doesn't, I won't stress out. I'm playing it cool. Cool, stoic, unflinching Oriko. The drone in the office always reaches its nadir at this time in the evening. What's nadir? Nadir? What is I don't know what that word is. This time in the evening. It's actually quite pleasant being able to sit in a quiet environment and feel the soft breeze of the air conditioner against my skin. I like to take this time to slowly pack away my things and get ready for the journey home. As I take off my headphones and stretch my arms, Tomoe approaches me with a spring in her step. Yo, what up, slut? Ah, uh, hi. About a week ago, I would have taken Tomoe's greeting as an insult. Now that I know her a little better, I can tell she's actually just being affectionate. Despite any differences we may have once had, she really seems to have warmed up to me lately. Hello. How did your day go? Uh, you know, same old. What about you? Trying to go home. It went well, thanks. Good to hear. You know, Shinya and I are supposed to go out tonight, but... Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Azumi seemed, like, kind of Oh, yeah, me. his fucking... Mm. He can barely look me in the eye. Fuck! <clears throat> really? I spoke to him this morning. He seemed okay. Mm. You don't reckon he's seen another woman, do you? Huh? Another woman? Some fragment of a memory, some glimpse of a murky recollection flitters around the corners of my mind, just out of reach. Shinya and another woman. Something is on the tip of my tongue, but I can't quite formulate my thoughts. Shinya isn't the type to cheat, though, so... I don't know. Nadir, did I pronounce that right? It's the lowest point? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Cheating. No, Shinya wouldn't do that. He was so nervous when he spoke to me about being pressured into sex. Oh. 
That's it. The memory that was flitting around the edges of my consciousness has come into the light. Sidney spoke to me hypothetically about being pressured into sex. He said Tomoe wasn't the one pressuring him, so who was he talking about? Yeah. Is this something I should talk to Tomoe about? If Shinya really is having a hard time and acting different around the, differently around Tomoe, then their relationship could really be in trouble. But is it even my place to say anything? Shinya spoke to me in confidence. He's my friend. But Tomoe is my friend too, and she seems genuinely worried about him. I take a deep breath. This is just off drama, like usual. Norika would normally just reject it all and ignore these people. She wouldn't give it a second thought. But that's unhealthy, anxious, scared, weak Noriko. I don't want to be that girl anymore. I can be more than that. I'm improving day by day. And part of that improvement involves being more social. It's good for me, right? Uh-oh. Shinya and Tomoe are my friends. People want their friends to be happy. That's normal. That's normal. That's normal, right? I think so. Therefore, I want them to be happy. Together. I swallow hard and speak my mind. Tomoe, I think oh no! May be involved with another one. Nader? I have never heard that word in my life. I've heard of Tom Nader. Is that a person? Is that a person? I don't know. I don't know how that's in my brain, but it is. What? Ah, Are shit! What did we just do? Listen, though. It's not exactly how it sounds. He came to me a little while ago and asked what to do if someone pressured him into sex. I know that you're not the one he was referring to, so... I think he may be in trouble. I think someone else might be forcing him to do something he doesn't want to do. But why wouldn't he look at Tomoe? What the fuck? <laughs> he spoke to you about it, but not uh, me? Uh, shut up. Tomoe, he seemed really depressed about it. I think he wanted to resolve the situation without having to worry you. Her necklace got bigger. <sighs> yeah, I get what you mean, but who the hell is trying to seduce him? Uh. I'm afraid I have no clue about that. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Thanks for telling me this anyway. Now at least I know something's up with him. I'm going to speak to him. I was going to say, you I'll guys could just talk. Talk in general is like, hey, dude. You know, we're kind of seeing each other, and I noticed you're kind of down. Anything on your mind? You want to talk? You know, I'm here for you. Are you sure that's the best Instead of thing coming to, to me, fuck. Yeah, cause I'll let him know that I'll take care of everything. If some bitch is putting the moves on my Shinya, I'll smack him into the ground. Yeah, we we felt that firsthand. Huh. <laughs> of course. I don't know why I ever doubted you. That that's what I said. Space last night. I think it's his woman. Uh, I think it's uh, Ida. The boss lady, because um, the punishment for him recommending Owie is way too severe for what's happening. So I think she's using that as leverage to get him to do things because his future at the company is at stake, right? I think that's what's happening. Tomoe grins despite her obvious frustration and gives me a thumbs up. Thanks, gang. I'll keep you updated. Okay. Okay. Good luck. She spins on her heel and leaves me behind. I think I did the right thing. Surely Tomoe will get to the bottom of the situation. I watch as she wanders over to Shinya's desk. They exchange a few words and I can't hear that I can't hear from my position. Tomoe then leaves and Shinya sluggishly lowers his head to rest against his desk. Now that Tomoe has left the office, only a handful of stragglers remain on the floor, myself and Shinya included. Uh oh, is he going to come over being mad at me? I find myself watching Shinya for more than a few minutes. He doesn't seem to notice that my gaze is locked on him. A few more of my co-workers take the leave, and an eerie quiet descends over the empty office floor. I remain in my chair, staring intently at Shinya's distraught face. We're the only ones still here. Go to fucking talk to him. Oh, fuck. He doesn't show any signs of moving. It's kind of unnerving to see him like this. It's not like he's the peppiest or most energetic person I've ever met, but to see him so drained and motionless makes me feel uncomfortable. I owe it to my newest convictions to go and talk to Shinya. More than that, I owe it to him. I find myself striding towards the desk before my mind even registers that I'm moving. Hey. He's going to yell at me. I'm slightly startled when he immediately looks up at me. The sudden movement is reminiscent of a corpse springing to life in a B-grade zombie film. Oh, Noriko. Hey, dude. Not feeling well? Not really. <sighs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be here if I'm unwell. I didn't mean to worry you. Don't sweat it. I'll uh, take my leave then. 
Hey, you want to go out for a coffee? If he leaves now, I don't feel like I've done anything to help him. As awkward as it feels to pry into his personal affairs, I need a big, I need to dig deeper if I'm going to try and help him feel better. Uh, what should I even say? Oh, this is our third interaction in the game. Something was wrong. Tell me what's wrong. I don't expect my blunt words to get through to him. I don't expect anything really. I'm not used to confronting people about the shit they're facing in their personal lives. I'm usually content to simply sit on the sidelines and watch. Don't need to worry. I'll be okay. He tries to smile, but his composure cracks under the weight of his blatant lie. I quickly try to piece together what I know about his current situation. Based on the slivers of information I've been drip fed, I'm certain that someone has been sexually assaulting him. Fuck. At the very least, someone has been trying to force him into doing something he doesn't want to do. I don't know who that person could be. It could be someone from the office. It could be someone from his private life. I'm confident that it's not Tomoe. Shinny isn't the kind of person to ever stand up for himself. And he's probably not the type of person to speak up when he's feeling down. But his recent composure reveals volumes about how he's truly feeling. Whatever the situation is, it's painfully obvious that Shinya is a victim. Whatever's happening in his life is not his fault, and he's too proud or stoic or embarrassed to seek help, even from his own girlfriend. If I don't put one foot forward and cut to the chase, chances are Shinya will never build up the courage to ask for help before it's too late. Someone is sexually assaulting you. Oh God. Right. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't even flinch when I have to give him, which I have to give him credit for. This is a guy that couldn't keep from blushing the last time the word sex was mentioned around him. Yes. His calm response and even calmer demeanor divulges his inner turmoil. I see. Oh God, I'm going to throw up. I don't know what to say next. I see probably wasn't the best starting point, but I am truly at a loss for words. He confessed so readily and expected more resistance. Oh my god, dude. Ugh. Not you. Not Tomoe. Can I give you a hug? I can't even tell my father, and he's a detective. A powerful authority figure. There's nothing I can do. I'm trapped. This fucking sucks. Trapped. It's a feeling I'm all too familiar with. It's a feeling shared by countless victims, not that Shinya and I have ever gone through the same trauma. A part of me can't help but wonder if that feeling of helplessness is what flashes through the minds of my own victims. Actually, I don't have to wonder. I know it to be true. The realization makes me feel simultaneously queasy and satisfied. What will happen if you tell someone? I don't know. If, if the truth comes out, I... I could lose my job. I... See? I could lose Tomoe his job and it's somebody we work with somebody in this very office has been taking advantage of Shinya somebody here then yep it's Ida I speak in thoughts aloud and he looks directly at me how you're worried you'll lose your job if you come forward it's obvious sorry oh I'm fuck not dude to sound rude if this person found out you came forward you'd lose your job then it's someone in power. Saying all this out loud in front of him is caused him to have a panic attack, Noriko. You need to be here in support of him, not bringing the facts saying you figured shit out that he's trying to hide. That's why you can't tell me. That's right. I nod. I can see the predicament. So, you don't have to say another word to me. There you go. Huh? It wouldn't be your fault if I stumbled upon someone assaulting you. It wouldn't be your fault if I was around to witness it. Okay. Now we're putting him back into that corner again. Here we go. A gleam of resolution sparks from deep within Shinya's cloudy eyes. Someone says if he's come up with a brilliant scheme, a scheme that not so subtly planted within his mind. Although he loves detective novels. So maybe this will get like his mind off of it and help his situation at the same time. Shinya takes a deep breath before collecting his bag. I'm taking the elevator up to the executive offices. Please don't follow me. With that, he gently pushes past me and makes a beeline for the elevator. As the door closes behind him and the familiar thrum of the elevator pans out around me, I stand still and close my eyes. I count to 100 in my head, giving Shinya a generous head start. The sun dips behind the office towers in the distance while my eyes are closed. 
When I finally finished counting, I opened my eyes to a dark and empty office. With a deep breath, I walked to the traces. I walk in the traces of Shina's footsteps towards the elevator. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I don't want to. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I've never been to this level of the building before. What reason would I have to visit the executive office? When execs have business with junior staff, they descend from the lofty perch and grace us with their, grace us with their presence on the 13, 14th floor. I'm surprised you came to see me again. A woman's voice from nearby catches my attention. It's a hushed yet aggressive tone like the whisper of a venomous serpent. Are you finally going to let me have my way? I hate this. I creep out of the elevator, hoping against hope that the ding in the elevator's arrival wasn't noticed by the owner of the unidentified voice. Stop it! That was Shinya's voice. I creep around the corner and catch a glimpse of two bodies at a nearby desk. Come on now. I'm tired of playing games. Is that Ida? I don't remember her last name. You want to please me, don't you? I hate this. I'm your trigger brother. trigger warning to anyone. Like seriously, dip out. Or mute, hide the tab, whatever you need to do. I'll put in, I'll put in chat when it's safe. How can you expect to get ahead in this company without sucking up to your superiors? It is Ida. That's right. The executive of Shinya's career in her hands. The very same woman who blamed Shinya for the mishap with hiring her, Aoi. So this whole situation is more in depth than I originally thought. It was never about Aoi. It was about holding power over Shinya. Miss Ida, uh, please, I, I just came here to... Oh, shh, I don't want to hear. Take your shirt off. I hate this. Please let me skip this. I... I swallowed hard. I knew that Shinya was in trouble, but I didn't expect things to escalate this quickly. I don't have time to think rationally. I stride forward rather loudly and purposely bump into a desk, sending a plotted plant tumbling to the carpeted floor with a dull thwump. Oh, thank you. Please be over. Kotomi's neck pivots at full speed and she turns to face me. Her eyes narrow into hateful slits as she withdraws from Shinya. Why she got... Mm. Within seconds, Kotomi has abandoned Shinya and drawn close to me. No, no. Kurosawa, what in hell's name do you think you're doing? What in the hell's name do you think you're doing? This level is for executives only. I should have you thrown out of here by security. Shin... Uh... Fujikawa isn't an executive either, Miss Ida. And he looks quite at home here. Shina stands in the background, shyly tidying his shirt. Kotomi's eyes somehow narrow even further, to the point where I'm certain she can't possibly see anything. Fujikawa's business here is none of your concern, Kurosawa. Leave. Now. Or I'll have you forcefully removed. I fold my arms over my chest and dig my heels into the ground. I'm not one for confrontation. I'm not one to hold my ground against a powerful adversary. And yet, this vivid image of Tomoe has bloomed in my mind. Tomoe, so strong-willed and head over heels in love with Shinya. Tomoe, who would do anything to protect the guy she adores. In Tomoe's absence, it feels false to me to protect Shinya. Fuck off, you filthy skank. Hell yeah, tell her. I can't believe the foul words that tumble out of my mouth. Apparently, Kotome can't believe it either because her eyes finally widen and her jaw drops. She looks like a stupid fucking idiot. Somehow, Tomoe's indomitable spirit seems to have inhabited my body. My words echo her own. That, or I've just managed to find a temporary burst of courage. What did you say to me? I called you a skank. Get the fuck out of here. You heard me loud and clear. Back off from Shinya. If I catch word that you're harassing him, I'll have you in a legal headlock. Hell yeah! Tell her. Although she's going to try to fi get me fired now. You, you don't even know what you're talking about. Trust me, I know enough to bury a dirty slut like you. Yeah, get her. But tell me grits her teeth and a vein protrudes from her forehead. Without another word, she simply pushes past me. Her shoulders slam into mine. But by some minor miracle, I manage to hold my ground. I hear her footsteps fade away as she leaves the floor. I exhale sharply and a wave of dizziness suddenly washes over me. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot of uh, adrenaline. That was amazing. There you go. Hold on. It's safe now. There you go. I done sway. 
a little, then take another deep breath and rebalance myself. Happy to be of assistance. I can tell Shinya doesn't know what to do next. He looks like he wants to hug me, but given the gravity of this recent situation, we both silently decided that's not the best idea. Yeah. Instead, he settles for patting my shoulder with his hand. Thank you, Noriko. Thank you so much. No problem. I don't know where you get your courage. Perhaps I could stand to learn a thing or two from you. Watch our, our, pic oh, <laughs> our picture is going to be submitted to Corpse Girl's website again. Don't sweat it. I'm going to go home for now. I hope that's okay. Are you going to be okay, dude? Of course. You want me to walk go you home? Some rest. Tina smiles for the first time in a while, and he releases his hand from my shoulder. After he's gone, I collapse into a nearby chair and listen to the frenzied sound of blood pounding through my veins. Achievement unlocked. Boy justice. I got an achievement for that? Oh, is it because the, the option I chose? <gasps> Did I fuck up Owie's storyline? By chasing her? Fuck! Steam and suds fill my vision as a, as a pleasant torrent of hot water sprays across my body. The titles on the shower wall are polished to a near, are purely sheen, so much that I can now see my own hulking and beautiful, beautifully ugly reflection in them. The shadow on the reflection has dark matted hair in her eyes. I don't know if she can see me like I can see her. I wipe my hair from my eyes and stare into space, trying to shake the abstract thoughts from my mind. That noise is always so loud. It isn't until my phone springs the light from the bathroom countertop that my thoughts return to the present. Did it? I got a new charger, I'm assuming. I startle at the noise. I peer through the shower's glass door, but it's impossible to make out the name flashing on the phone screen thanks to the steam that has fogged up the glass. I was the only person who regularly calls me, so it could be... Is my... Oh, I thought the green screen was jacked up. So it could be her ringing. Or it could be a spam caller trying to sell me something I really don't need, but I may just cave in and buy it anyway because it's a nice feeling that someone thought to call me. I open the shower do door and tiptoe out, my wet and dripping body causing pools of water to form on the bathroom floor. Or it's the notification we set up. The deft hand snatches at my phone and I clutch to my chest and I retreat back to the shower. Which would be interesting if it was because that wasn't the first thing on to come to her mind, like it usually is. The water never stopped running, and it greets me with a welcome warmth as I bask in it once more. My phone is a fairly new model, so it's conveniently waterproof. I take advantage of this feature, feature on occasion. Is it... Do people use their phones in the, the shower? I would never do that, even if it's waterproof. It's nice to be able to submerge myself in the water and browse the web to truly escape my own thoughts. That's also a reason I wouldn't do it. Like, oh, well, I just realized the water's gone cold because I've been in here for a fucking hour scrolling. Heavy droplets smack against the phone and dribble down, but my eyes ignore them as they scan the screen. The incoming call is a voice chat request from noise user Koji, uh, Koji Koji. Kojiro was calling me? I answered the call. Noriko. I'm in the shower. Hey. Hi. Good time? No, I'm in the shower. Sure. N what? Bad. I wanted to tell you something. I saw a post on. Hmm? This call has static. Sorry, it's just the shower running. Oh, in the shower? Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. So... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that would be my exact reaction too. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, sorry. Awkward now. Now you're making it awkward. You just move on. Oh, like, really? All right. Well. Fine. What did you want to tell me? Okay. Saw a new post on noise chant today. Posted this afternoon. Might interest you. The message board noise the message board noise channel is often affectionately referred to as noise chan by certain frequent users. I'm not really surprised that Kujiro is the type to call it that. What was the post about? Well, someone wrote this. I quote Hey, so today I got a strange score photo from a number I don't uh -oh. have in my contacts. Continuing. Not sure what the deal is. It was gross though. Wondering if any hackers can trace the number or something. That was... We've seen that exact phrase earlier. Oh, that was from the beginning! When, um, Emmy was looking up... Uh, if anyone else had that situation. Oh, dip. It's about to come full, full, 
Circle now. A strange gore photo from a number I don't have in my contacts. Sounds like corpse girl is struck again. Right? Not the same thing. I wonder who wrote the post. Kojiro mentioned the post was written today, and the original poster wrote that they received a photo today. That means it can only be one of two people. Either of my latest victims. The carbon copy businessman, or the attractive semi-famous singer, idol, actor, whatever woman. So, who wrote this post anyway? Don't know. Anonymous. Of course. It was a stupid question. No one would attach their name to such a strange post. It, probably the businessman, because the noise... If I understand correctly, noise channels or noise is based on uh no maybe it maybe it's like a, a global forum never mind was hoping you could tell me how would i know well you're a corpse girl right yeah see he knows because uh, i'm an idiot this again kojiro just doesn't let it slide because you're an idiot you pretty much told him that you are why doesn't he why does he suspect me now what did I do this okay. time? We can discuss later. Oh yeah, the original post has a reply. It does? I'll read it too. Quote, you got this too? Was the gore photo a picture of yourself? I'm worried. Received a similar pic from the same number. That was Emmy. I think. In that pot model. So what's, I don't think... So I think I was close. My original thought was the corpse that shows up on uh, Emmy's doorstep or whatever. My original thought was it was going to be a Tomoe's body. I think it's going to be that Pop Idol's body. Have a good one, Rooster. Uh, thanks for the butt flexes. Continuing thinking about contacting the police. Not sure if I'm overreacting. Nah. So the first voice received a supply. A supply, a reply. Interesting. Very interesting. Most posters talk about receiving a photo. That only can mean that one of them is the boring businessman and one of them is the semi-famous woman. However, the fact that they've taken the discussion online instead of just slitting their own throats is rather troubling. But the photo's not convincing enough to make them kill themselves. Or not enticing enough to summon another entity to snuff out their souls. I think... Like... You, you, you would take it to that level if you were paranoid, right? Or that kind of sp suspicious. Because she's convinced that someone receiving a grisly photo that seems like it's them dead in the future will just off themselves. Right? If I received a photo, a grisly photo of me, of potentially me of my death, I'd just be like, what the fuck? All right, this is fucked up and weird and go about my business. But she doesn't seem to have that in her brain. She seems to think that people will just be like, Ah, oh, shit. It's fate. Or this is so fucked up. And just kill themselves. Unalive themselves. YouTube doesn't like the other phrase. I don't know. Where the, uh, where the photo's not convincing enough to make them kill themselves. Or, God damn it. Or not enticing enough to summon another entity to stuff out their souls. Was this attempt just a repeat of the failure I had with the twin woman? Anyway shower let's talk tomorrow corpse girl before i can interject kojiro ends the call shit he's once again assuming my true identity he's assuming correctly but that's besides the point well maybe it doesn't matter too much maybe this will actually save me some time and effort if he already knows i'm corpse girl it should be easy to strike a deal with him in exchange for access to fresh supply of cadavers called it i mean that part was pretty obvious that is, if I decide to walk that path and take the game to the next level. Thinking it through, I may very well have to go ahead and do that. My last three victims have not ended their lives as I planned. My success rate is very, very low. That's a depressing fact. And one that the old Noriko would probably have thrown a tantrum over. Not me. Not new and improved Noriko. I turn off the running water and step out of the shower. A shiver scuttles down my spine like a spider as the cold... Oh, wow. My, uh, my cadence on that fucked that up. 
A shiver scutters down my spine like a spider as the cold, damp air clings to my naked form. Throwing my phone under the bathroom counter, I reach for a towel and wrap around my corpulent, emaciated body. The thick flab on my skeletal arms jiggles as I dry myself off. Hmm, I have some, uh, body issues. Or, uh, body image issues, I should say. When I'm satisfied that my fleshly and cadaverous body is complete, when I'm satisfied that my fleshly and cadaverous body is completely dry, I grab a second towel and wrap it around my hair. Cadaverous is highlighted. A cursory glance in the mirror as I, a cursory glance in the mirror as I leave the bathroom reveals my gaunt face and prominent cheekbones. I get the feeling that even though I've been gaining weight, I am thin thinning out more and more. Although my body isn't perfect, I'm still in love with my eyes. I won't change a thing about them. Oh, she's bringing up her eyes again. While my frame simultaneously grows plumper and slimmer, I hope my eyes will always stay the same. I flick off the bathroom light as I exit. Entering my bedroom, I sit down on the bed with a towel around my body and another one around my hair. My laptop is lying down, or lying open on the sheets, so I pull it towards me. A few clever keywords in a search engine quickly leads me to the post on noise cha channel with, that Kojiro just informed me about. Sure enough, he was telling the truth. The original poster submitted this just today, and the follow-up reply was submitted shortly after. Excuse me. I skim through the text to see if there are any clues about either post poster's identity. However, nothing really stands out. I retain my assumptions that the two my two latest victims created these posts. Ooh, excuse me. I spend a little time applying various moisturizing creams to my skin before getting dressed in my bedwear. I'm feeling pretty relaxed by the time I finish. Perhaps I'll spend the rest of the evening reading a book in bed. Or I could try and plan out my next move with Kojiro. Should I come forward, claim my identity, and request access to his morgue? It's a big step. This seems to be the time for me to make a bold move. I can't keep working on requests that are doomed to fail. I need to start succeeding. For me. For Corpse Girl. I pull my laptop to me once more and begin to brainstorm my plans. You should be here by now. I was pretty clear about meeting at 5.30 p.m. It's already 5.45 and he isn't even in sight. I thought for sure he wouldn't miss a chance to meet up with me again. I can't contain my nerves. I try to tell myself that I'm only angry because of trepidation, and I'm not actually angry at him. This is a big moment for me. I've never once revealed my identity to anyone. I assume he will take it to in stride. I wouldn't be going through with this if I didn't firmly believe that. Hi. Hey, where'd you come from? My neck jerks in reaction to the voice. There you are. I'm late. I make a point of checking the time on my phone and nod. Uh, traffic? You drove here? No. Okay. What did you want to discuss? I have a request for you. And a confession. Kojiro's eyes widen and he looks me up and down. Wait. I blink and look down at the ground. He's known for some time. I was fooling myself thinking that my stupid attempts to erase suspicion of my identity were, work were working on him. You're going to confess your love. I've been waiting for this moment. He's just doing that to throw, throw her off. Wait, no, that's not... You, relax. Shh, shh, shh. No more words. I accept your heart. K Kojiro, I don't... Call me Koji now. We're one. No need to be shy. <laughs> He's just fucking with her, right? <sighs> this isn't getting me anywhere. Thanks to my frustration and nervousness, as I simply blurted out my true confession. I'm Corpse Girl. Kojiro doesn't react. Well, he cocks his head a few degrees to the side, slowly and surely. If you can even call that a reaction to my sudden outburst. Wait, he wasn't joking around with her? Yes. Okay. So, a kiss to commemorate our love? Oh, no, he wasn't joking. Did you even hear what I just said? Of course. I'm Corpse Girl! I'm the one behind the corpse photos, and the deaths, and... Uh... It feels kind of strange to say these things out loud. For some reason, it leaves a sour and bitter taste in my mouth that I can't swallow. Yes, I know. <laughs> Knew it since our first noise chat. Our first noise chat? Remember? You messaged me late at night. Asked me if I knew about Corpse Girl. Is that what tipped you off? You assumed I was her just because I mentioned her? No. You think he was joking? 
I do too, but the inflection in his voice at the end there makes me think maybe he wasn't. Then how? How did you figure it out? You asked me to look up names. Names of corpse girls' victims. Mm hmm Oh yeah. I did. That huh? was stupid of you. That was stupid of me. I suppose that gave it away. No. Other people could have known those names. Then come on. Throw me a bone here. Don't say that phrase what to someone that was just trying to come on to you. You said you requested A. Chihanada's death. Aichi Hanada, the guy who died in a traffic accident. I remember that I lied to Kojiro about being the one to request his death. It was the only way I could escape his, his suspicions at the time. If I remember correctly, it threw him off my trail for a while. He believed I was the one who requested the death, so that explained how I... That better not have been a giant fucking spider that just ran across my wall. Oh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I hope it was just a fly. He was the one. He believed I was the one who requested the death, so that explained how I knew he was one of Corpse Girl's victims. But if what Kojiro is telling me now is true, then my lie actually had the opposite effect. How did it make him figure out my identity? I don't understand. I confessed to requesting A. G. Hanada's death. So what? That was a lie. Mm -hmm. Even so, I still don't understand. You're not making any sense. Kojiro's shoulders drop. He stares at me intently. You lied about requesting A. Chihanda's death. That lie proved to me that you're a corpse girl. Yes, but how? Tell me! I was the one who requested A. Chihanda's death. Oh shit, dog! That I did not expect. The music's dope. I keep seeing something out of the corner of my eye. Holy shit, I did not see that. Kojiro's deadpan countenance makes his claim believable beyond all doubt. I feel the blood drain from my face. I submitted his photo to Corpse Girl's website. Imagine my surprise when you claim that you did it. That lie made it clear. You knew his name. You knew he died. You knew he was Corpse Girl's victim. Now I'm feeling stuff like what running across my skin. I hate it. There go. You are Corpse Girl. Despite my dazed state, I can't fault his logic. I took credit for something Kojiro did. Of course I would paint me as a liar in his eyes. This music is dope, though. Yes. Turn it up a little bit. And yet, you still met up with me. And not just today, but at the cafe, too. Yes. Aren't you scared of me? <laughs> no, that's not the way I'd put it. You should be scared of me. After all, I requested the death. Had motive for murder, even if I didn't carry it out personally. Imagine what else I'm capable of. I subconsciously take subconsciously taste it back from Kujiro's suddenly looming form. More discussions. I know you don't kill your victims. You just nudge them, urge them, tempt them with death as an escape from their fear. You're no murderer. What reason have I to fear you? He's right. He's absolutely right. He knows everything about Corpse Girl's methods. My methods. Kojiro is a dangerous enemy. Or a powerful ally. And it's up to me to decide whether he, he's with me or against me. I recall our conversation at the cafe. He claimed he would support Corpse Girl if she came to him for assistance. He's a fan. He would support her obediently. No questions asked. As long as the price is right. See? Very much a death note. So all I have to do is make him offer that he can't refuse. Join me. Rid this fucking world of the fetid filth that invests it. You're just killing random people, though. 
Norco. You're killing random people. You're you're doing the bad thing. You're killing the people that bad people are requesting to, to kill. People that request people to die are the ones that should not, should not be being alive, Norco. Not the ones that are being requested to die. Not all times, but you know what I mean? I decided to quote a certain passage from a book that Cordero ga himself gave me. A paragraph from Strange Flower. That has stuck with me for some time. There's a certain beauty in death. A macabre certainty. An absolute state of finality. No Mel Sinclair. You understand what I'm talking about. You work with cadavers for a living. The dead can't hurt you. They can't betray you. They can't disobey or object or disapprove. Wouldn't it be better if we were all beautiful like that? Yeesh. Perhaps. Didn't expect Corpse Girl to be so vain. Is your motivation simply to impart your own ideas of beauty to the world? No. There's more to it. Of course. I, me, myself, Noriko, may be vain. But Corpse Girl isn't burdened by such petty notions. Yeah. Her ambition is You sure your ego doesn't get poured into her? Her ambition is crucial to the survival of the entire human Are you gonna tell me what the ambition is finally? <laughs> Thought I had a big ego. Yeah, see? You're so self important. Both you and Corpse Girl. Hmm. I don't expect you to understand. Not yet. But I've realized that I can't do everything alone. I need your help. I need cadavers. I see. What's in it for me? This is the critical point of our negotiation. Is it going to give me a choice to date him? It could all fall apart here if I don't offer something Kajiro considers worth the risk. The question is, what does he want? What does he desire? I propose an equal partnership. You'll reap half of the benefits from Corpse Girl's work. What benefits? This offer is a gamble, and I know in the back of my mind. However, it was the only feasible solution I could come up with when I planned out the encounter la late last night. This tactic relies completely on my assumed understanding of Kojiro's innermost desires. If I'm wrong about him, then this whole thing will blow up in my face. Corpse Girl will create more death than you could ever imagine. Think of all the fresh corpses you could get your eager little hands on. Is he really interested in the corpses? Kojiro shakes his head. His lips purse in a thin line of disapproval. Sorry, already got my film. Yeah, he, he's not. He's never made it apparent that he's got some sort of oh my god, yes, give me corpses fascination. Works full enough as it is. Yeah, he just works there. He may have a fascination with corpses, but he didn't make it like it's something that he wants. I near my eyes to stand my ground. I can't back down now. I'm so close to unraveling him and his secrets. Hmm. You've always wanted to mimic Nobel Sinclair. I can see it in your face, in your very soul, whenever you praise his work. You want to emulate his actions and experience his escapades firsthand. Okay. You want to dress up corpses, take them out to dinner. Perform all manner of bizarre social experiments with the dead. Uh, I don't like it. It's your passion. But living vicariously through Nobel Sinclair's books isn't enough for you anymore. And that's where your fascination with me... Okay. ...stems from. As soon as you figured me out, you knew I was your gateway to satisfying your lust for the macabre. You work with cadavers all day, every day. But you can't get them out of the morgue with eyes on you at all times. But I can. I have the perfect plan on how to withdraw all the corpses we could ever need. Half of them for you, and half of them for me. An equal partner. How? How do you have a plan? You've never even been there! How do you have a plan to get him out? Ah, oh, fuck it. I have questions. I end my speech and let Kujiro bask in my words. I hope I was convincing enough to sway him, and I hope, I pray, that I'm correct about his sickest desires. His reaction isn't exactly what I was expecting. He laughs, a big, hearty guffaw that scares a few nearby birds and sends them flying to safety. Clapping his hands together slowly, he inches closer to me until I can feel his breath across my face. Figured me out. I'll play along. Say there's a way to get corpses out of the morgue. 
without getting busted. Don't you think I'd have found it by now? Yeah, exactly. Hmm, perhaps you're not as clever as you think you are. <laughs> perhaps. But you have the answer. I do. I guarantee it will work. Hmm. A bead of sweat forms on the back of my neck. I'm not exactly bluffing because I have planned out this whole scenario in detail. Or in detail. <laughs> in detail. But until I actually try to pull off such a maneuver, I can only speculate that it will work. I need to exaggerate my confidence long enough for us to rally together. Something about you makes you seem trustworthy. So be it. Consider us partners. For now. Uh, you accept? Sure. Don't make me regret it. But listen. What I do with my share of corpses is my business. No nosing about. Got it? Yeesh. You still want to keep secrets, even if we'll be working together? That might be a good idea. Shouldn't we be open and honest and build a trusting partnership? Hmm. I think we, the less you know, possibly the better. Here's the deal. You don't pry, and I'll assist you with Corpse Girl's work. I'll help you craft your elaborate photos. No charge. I get privacy. You get an assistant. Mutually beneficial. Wouldn't you agree? I think about his offer. It's true that I don't really need to know what he's going to do with the corpses on offer. The whole thing is illegal already. So if he wants to take it further, that's not on me. And if I can get some assistance, it will surely help me churn out photos at a faster rate. I'll need muscle to move bodies for starters. That alone is worth keeping my nose clean. Okay. We have a deal. Glad to hear it. Kojiro extends a hand and I grip it as firmly as my frail bones will allow. We shake once and Kajiro offers me a surprisingly warm smile. His intense, murderous demeanor suddenly vanishes and he reverts to his awkward alien self. Saw us about the love confession stuff before. Too late now, but I'd have helped Corpse Girl in return for a simple date. <laughs> Seriously, did I come up with some elaborate insight into his psyche and his desires for absolutely no reason? Was all he, was all he wanted a chance to take me out? <laughs> he said a date, not dating. No backing out now. We've got a deal, right? Oh boy. Right. Welcome to the team, Kojiro. Team Corpse Girl, huh? Well, it's good to be on board. My more connection? Your schemes. We hoist piles of corpses out and split the stack 50-50. That the whole of it? To put it simply, yeah. And I get your assistance with Corpse Girl's work. A reward for keeping my eyes shut. I think my webcam is slightly too large. Let me shrink it down so slightly. Good enough. Good enough. Good stuff. Of course. Looking forward to that. The spoken contract's as good as anything to me. I'm satisfied. Yeah, let's not write it down or put it in fucking paper. When do we start? Soon. There's only one thing missing from my plan. That is? We need somewhere to store the bodies we retrieve. Somewhere big, with no one to meddle in our business. I'm thinking an old warehouse or something like that. Hmm. A warehouse, huh? What about an abandoned factory? Gross, dude. Place. How are you going to keep them cool? To keep... I... There are so many questions. A factory? An abandoned factory... All for our corpse collection. That's fucking gross. I like the sound of that. Oh god, that's the name of the game. They dropped the name, Corpse Factory. It's pretty late by the time I get back home. I'm completely wiped out. That conversation with Kujiro took way more out of me than I would have guessed. My entire mouth feels parched and dry. Probably due to a combination of nervousness, nervousness, oh my god, nervousness and talking far too much. Still, I'm happy with the end result. That meeting was worth stepping out of my comfort zone for. I'll wait for Gojiro to get back to me about the abandoned factory. Once we secure a location like that, our real work will begin. I figured that I should turn in for the night since I need to be at the office in the morning. Speaking of, I need to eat. Where did speaking of come, from, come in from that? Come on, brain. Keep up. The ever-present tug of curiosity pulls at my sleeve, and I feel myself being drawn to my laptop. Probably, sorry, ADHD brain is going full mode. Probably because she said she needed to turn in, so my brain was like, Oh yeah, when we go to sleep, you gotta eat because you're hungry. 
So my brain just automatically interjected that she's going to eat. <laughs> so uh, that's how that happened. Enjoy the brain. I have to live with it. I'll take a quick look before new requests. Just a peek. Laptop open and logged in. I feel a surge of endorphins slug me across the face when I see the notification for one new request. Squealing like an overly excited schoolgirl, I open the message view the details. It's Emmy. Oh! I was wondering if Shinya was going to submit her photo. Woman, middle-aged with stern expression. Well-groomed and dressed in business attire. And immediately familiar. Kotomi Ida. I'm in complete disbelief. Seeing this request come through this site gives me a disorienting sense of deja vu. Iraq. Isn't that kind of rack? Spelled W-R-A-C-K? I rack my brain for the cause, wondering if I've lived this moment before. The answer hits me quickly, despite my mind's exhaustion. Kotomi Ida isn't the first co-worker of mine to have her death requested. Though I don't know, didn't, didn't know it at the time, Akane Tsurumaki also worked in my building, and her death was requested not all that long ago. Kotomi Ida marks the second person to be wanted dead within my company, and she's an exec, just like Tsurumaki. I wonder if this is simply a coincidence. Surely it has to be. After all, Tomoe confessed that she was the one to request Tsurumaki's death, and she seemed to regret doing so. Therefore, I have to doubt that she'd go on to upload Kotomi Ida's photo to the site. So who could want Kotomi Ida dead? She isn't the most likable person, but who really is? She deals with the juniors on my floor on a regular basis. The juniors, like me, Tomoe, Shinya. Shinya. That's right. Thanks to Takomi, Shinya's prospects at the company are dead in the dirt. And that's before even diving into the true issue, their current relationship. Would he request her death as ret retribution? He doesn't seem like the type, but... I let out a sigh. I'm far too tired to run through the myriad of possibilities tonight. I don't think I can even bring myself, my weary fingers to navigate to the database of deceased to start on this request. I'll tackle this tomorrow. No matter the reasons behind the request, Kotomi Ida will receive a corpse photo. That's my conviction as corpse girl, after all. I close the lid on my laptop, throw myself down on the bed, begging for sleep to claim me quickly. I need to talk to you. What's with that look? Got something up your ass? Come on, just follow me. I grabbed Tomoe's wrist and guided her away from the labyrinth of desks and into the elevator, waiting patiently for us. We emerged from the double doors into the lobby. The place is quiet and nearly empty. It offers significantly more privacy than the crowded 14th floor. God, your fingers are bony. You're pinching me. Sorry. I let go of her wrist and she rubs it gingerly against her clothes. Anyway, what's up? I, hesit I hesitate for a moment. Even though I ran through this scenario in my head during the train ride, I'm still anxious about playing it out now. If this situation involves Tomoe, either directly or indirectly, as my friend, she needs to know. I think Corpse Girl is going to target Kotomi Ida. You... Huh? Why would you tell you that? Did you get one of them photos? Her reaction is fairly indifferent. I thought after being involved in Tsurumaki's death, this news would have more of an impact on her. Well, no, I don't think so, but... How do you know then? That's hard to explain. Just bear with me. Kotomi and Shinya had a falling out. Because of her, his career here is at an end. I'm sure he told you about it. Yep. That makes sense. Shinya wouldn't confide in his girlfriend about his career, but I don't know the extent of Tomoe's inside knowledge. <laughs> Tomoe probably did it. I doubt she knows the true nature of their relationship, judging by how nonchalant her reaction has been so far. So, if you can kind of guess what I'm getting at? What? I think, maybe, that Shinya requested her death. <laughs> Shinya? Nah, he don't have it in him. Besides, that bitch has it coming. She does? Yep. I'm surprised you found out about it, but I plugged her photo into Corpse Girl's Hold website it. yesterday. I'm stunned. I can hardly formulate a response to Tomoe's confession. An absolute skank. She deserves to die. Yeah. 
Yeah, but, I think that was gonna happen. Why? After you requested Akane Tsurumaki's death, why would you... Look, it's not about Shinya's career, all right? I spoke with him, real deep and meaningful, like... He confided in me, but since we're friends, I suppose I can share it with you. Kotomi Ida has been sexually assaulting him. Uh, even if your friends... Ah, uh, fuck. Seriously? I feign a surprised reaction. In reality, I'm just more taken aback that Shinya actually confessed to Tomoe. It's been going on for months, he says. And now she's fucked his career up, so he'll have no choice but to leave the company. He leaves, and she gets off free without anyone finding out about what she's been doing to him. Yeah, fuck that bitch. I hate her. I hate her so fucking much. I tried to dig digest Tomoe's words. I didn't know that Shinya has been putting up with the abuse for such a long time. So Kotomi's motive for ending his career was purely out of self-interest. She was probably looking for a reason, any reason, to discard him. And that slight incident with Howie was just good enough for her to seize. Yep. If he quits the company, she won't get found out. It's a simple plan, but utterly devious. We should tell someone what she's been doing. She can't get away with that. She ain't gonna get away with it. Corpse Girl's coming for her, remember? <laughs> I can't wait to hear the news about Kotomi winding up dead somewhere. I hope she gets her throat slit. Oh my god, she's so fucking... She's so fucking loud and obnoxious and not discreet in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, but hey, how'd you find out about it? Tomoe cocks her head and gives me a concerned look. I brace myself as I watch the gear slowly turning inside her head, waiting for her to point the finger at me. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to reveal this information to Tomoe. I should have just kept my mouth shut and fulfilled the request like always. Damn it! Why does my curiosity always get the best of me? Because you're an idiot. I'm going to cause my own demise at the rate I'm going. Uh-huh. Hmm. Oh, I figured it out. Kotomi must have received a photo and told you about it, huh? Wow. Yeah, that's exactly that it. Corpse girl sure works fast. Tomoe's gleeful expression suddenly caves in and she gasps. Wait a minute. Why would she even yeah. show you something like that? There, well... She's putting things slowly together. Think about it. There was that time you got a photo, but nothing happened to you. Then, the only way you could have really known about Kotomi is... She's not going to put it together. I flinch as Tomoe takes a purposeful step towards me. Girl, oh, right? shit, she did. You have to be. It's the only thing that makes sense. I avert my gaze and look to the floor in silence. And there you just confirm it. Are you for real? I can't believe it. You took your sweet time figuring it out. figuring it out. Don't give me that bullshit. You can't expect me to figure out something like that if you're gonna try so hard to hide it. Oh god, she's the last person you want knowing. What the fuck, girl? You get your rocks off by killing people? Oh god. No, not exactly. I don't kill people. The hell you don't! Explain that bitch to Umaki. She killed herself. Oh boy. Yeah, she killed herself. That's the cover up, right? Mm. I'm serious. She killed herself. But Corpse Girl encouraged her to do it. Tomoe blinks a few times, her face scrunching up and analyzing my blanking She's expression. The truth. Holy shit. I can't believe this. You're really Corpse Girl? Oh god. Uh, everything's falling apart now. There's no going back now. After hiding my true identity for nearly a year, I've managed to reveal it to two people in less than 24 hours. I just hope I haven't made a fatal mistake. You absolutely did. I'm Corpse Girl. <laughs> wow, fuck me, right? All this time I've been thinking you're just some goth skank with weird hobbies. Oh boy. But you're actually pretty fucking cool. You're actually doing something with your life. I... Uh, I thought you'd be angry with me. Angry? Why would I be angry? God, this is the coolest oh thing that's God. ever happened to me. Oh God, this is the worst person to know. <laughs> Friends with fucking Corpse Girl. And people said I'd never amount to nothing. Though it took me long enough to figure it out. I ain't the sharpest light bulb in the shed. Sharpest light bulb in the shed. Love that. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Tomoe laughs and puts her arm around my shoulder. I shrink away a little, but her good cheer is somewhat infectious. 
I feel a flood of relief washed through my body. So, like, I gotta know. How can oh, Dot, this know? is... This is so bad. I said I don't kill people, remember? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. How many have off themselves because of you? It's an embarrassingly small number. That's so? Oh, that's a shame. Listen, you gotta fill me in on all the juicy deets later, Kay. For now, please focus on getting rid of that bitch Kotomi. I'll do my best. Thanks, Slut. Shinya and I will owe you one for sure. Tomoe swings around and looks towards the elevator. She turns back and gives me a thumbs up gesture. This convo never happened. Got it? <laughs> That's my line. You can't tell anyone about me and Corpse Girl. Please, who would I tell? Well, Shinya? The police, for starters? <laughs> Fuck them. I ain't a squealer. I'm on your side, Corpse Girl. Relax. Anyway, peace. Tomoe ducks away and leaves me standing alone. I really hope I made the right decision here. I really don't trust your judgment. I suppose I don't have a choice but to keep moving forward. My first order of business should be to take care of Kotomi and Ida. If I can get her to kill herself, it'll prove to Tomoe that I'm not messing around. And I might cement our friendship even further. I just have to get through the rest of the workday. Then I can return home and focus on crafting Kotomi's corpse photo. No, fucking Tomoe is going to take advantage that you're a corpse girl. That's when the real fun will begin. I reach into the drawer and clutch a cheap plastic burner phone between my fingers. Crafting the photo of Kotomi Ida is done. All I need to do is now is send it. I thought about waiting until tomorrow, but I already put off making the photo for a day, so I'll make my move tonight. During editing, I timestamp the photo at tomorrow's date, 10.46 a.m. It doesn't leave much time if Kotomi receives the photo tonight, but I'm confident the plan will be effective. Kotomi will look at the photo tonight. She'll either freak out and edit all immediately, or after a sleepless night of anxiety, she'll pull the trigger, figuratively speaking, instead of going to the office in the morning. I could cross my fingers and hope that by divine intervention, someone else will take her life, but based on my recent failures, I don't think that's likely anymore. If anyone else ever involved in the deaths of Corpse Girl's victims, I don't think they're still around. Why else would my last few attempts have failed? No. My best bet is to urge Kotomi to simply kill herself. Convincing enough corpse photo might be enough to lure her to her death. When I turn on the burner photo, I'm happy to see the battery is still charged. I load up the phone number, masking app, and enter my trademark digits, and then shoot the photo into the network. If Kotomi is a screen addict like the rest of society, she'll be freaking out in about 10 seconds. Since this victim is going to have a quick turnaround time, I'll take the burner to the back shed tonight to store it, and I'll ditch it in the, on the way to the office tomorrow. I'm not expecting a reply within such a narrow time frame, so there's no need to hold onto the phone for 24 hours like I normally do. Clutching the phone with one hand, I grab my keys from the kitchen bench with the other. I step toward the front door. Beep, beep, beep. The phone in my hand vibrates violently and I nearly drop it in terror. What the? I bring the screen swiftly to my face and read the alert. But one new message. Without thinking, I unlock the phone and open the message. It's a refl reply from Kotomi Ida. I was going to say, she's going to reply. One, she's the type to reply. And two, the... The change of uh, pace of like, oh, I'll wait 24 hours. Just the writing was like, no, no, make it different. You think this is funny? I know who you are. I'll report you to the police. Oh my God. Holy shit. <laughs> she actually replied. For the first time since Corpse Girl started her grand work, I've actually received a reply from the victim. Even though I use the number mask, there's actually nothing stopping someone from direct directly replying to my message. A reply message would still get sent through the network and back to the burner phone SIM card. The phone number the phone number masks simply a stealth tactic, disabling the ability to view the phone number actually is. What the phone number actually is. It doesn't prevent replies. I discard the burner phone anyways, but it's an added extra layer of security, not to mention a bit of a calling card. Judging by Katomi's response, I assume we have a fighter on our hands. She's not going to give in easily. My threat about reporting to the police is a bluff. I'm confident that she couldn't possibly know my identity. I've been waiting for this. I've waited so oh long boy. for someone to reply. I can finally put my contingency plan in practice. I've been holding out for this moment. I feel a wicked grin split my face in two and mash my fingers against the screen as I compose a venomous reply. You like that photo? That's you in about 12 hours. Unless you follow my instructions. 
The message sends an instant and I eagerly await the next reply. I'm not left waiting for long. Katomi's response comes through within seconds. Her attitude has completely changed. Please, I'll do anything. What do you want? <laughs> wow, yeah, complete flip. I called your bluff, you piece of shit. Now you'll do what I tell you to. I answer my instructions clearly and concisely. This is how we're going to get a freaking warehouse. Pack 500,000 yen into a bag. Put it in coin locker. 6644 at Shinjuku Station. Retrieve the item already inside. Put the locker key inside a full soda bottle, a full soda bottle, and leave it on top of the locker. After I send the message, I decide to add one last bit. Do it now. Make sure no one sees you. And go to platform 12. Do not board a train. Await my instructions. Satisfied this is addendum, I hit send. If Kotomi truly fears her, for her well-being, she'll carry out the instructions. Her response arrives shortly. Okay, I'll do it. I'm going there now. Yes. Did I skip? Nah, it was just her excited. I've done it. I've convinced her. I'll collect the money once I'm sure she is no longer hanging around. 500,000 yen is nothing to sneeze at. It's not life-changing, but I'll cover my rent for a few good months. I chose the, this amount simply to test the waters. Asking for an insane amount would make it impossible for a victim to fall through. But I figured someone like Kotomi, an exec for a big company, would easily have access to this much dough. I'll go collect the money. Even if everything goes well, Kotomi Ida will disappear before sunrise. Though the hour is late, quite a few commuters are still navigating through Shinjuku Station's wide platforms and underground labyrinth. The train station beneath my feet is a sprawling metropolis that extends below the city. It's packed with restaurants, shops, and other outlets. But as I'm standing on one of the outlet train platforms above ground, that world might as well be a completely different dimension. The only problem is that I'll have to brave the maze as soon as I descend the platform stairs. I tend to get dizzy in such places. A normal morning route doesn't require me to travel through the underground plaza. I'm able to exit the station within minutes of my train arriving on the platform. <laughs> Still, I'm somewhat familiar with the layout of the underground. I know exactly where Coin Locker 6644 is. The Coin Lockers in the train stations like these are a popular way for people to store luggage or personal belongings for a few hours at a time. In Shinjuku, it can often be difficult to find a single available locker. A coin locker 6644 is special. I approach it from the main passageway of the underground and my eyes take in a familiar sight. Locker 6644 sits in the middle row nestled between countless other lockers. The soda's there. Across its door is a thick coat of graffiti, colorful curse words sprayed on it with thick paint to adorn the locker. The graffiti is such an eyesore that it acts as a deterrent to anyone who might want to store their belongings. The icing on the cake is the condition of the coin-operated lock. The thing is busted and dented from physical abuse, like someone has tried to pry into it with a crowbar on multiple occasions. However, I know from testing it firsthand that the lock still works, despite its battered appearance. No one in their right mind would use this locker, and that makes it the perfect spot to ho host my pickup. Glancing at the locker, I notice that a soda bottle sits at top of the sits on top of it. A soda bottle full of bubbly, opaque liquid. I quickly look around to make sure the Kotomi Ida is nowhere in sight. I walk past the locker and complete a lap around the immediate area, scanning thoroughly for her. But she isn't here. In fact, there are very few people in this little section of the station. Good. She followed my instructions perfectly. After leaving the key in the soda bottle, she left immediately. I approach the locker once more. I recap above it and retrieve the soda bottle, then crack it open to hear the fuzzy, the fizzy hiss. I bring the lid of my bottle to eye level and peer inside, trying to identify the shape of the key within the swirling ocean of carbonation. There it is. I try to fish inside the narrow bottle, opening with my fingers. Thin though they are, I can't squeeze more than one finger inside the bottle at a time. I could tip the bottle over and let the soda and the key spill out onto the floor, but if someone sees me being a nuisance and causing a mess, it'll draw unwanted attention. I've got no choice but to chug back some of the soda and try to catch the key in my mouth. As disgusting as the concept is, I need to steal myself. I raise the bottle to my lips, tilt my head back, and pour the foul liquid in my open mouth. The saccharine tang of artificial flavoring assaults my taste buds and I immediately want to vomit. I'm committed to seeing this through. I can throw up later. <laughs> the most important thing is getting the key. 
It is until the water bottle is half empty that the cold metal key drops into my mouth. It clings against my teeth and I nearly choke in surprise. Sputtering and spitting, I feel droplets of soda, run <laughs> soda running down my chin. My cheeks are puffed up like squirrels as I try to retain the key in the soda in my mouth. I reach my fingers into a pur into pursed tight lips and recover the tiny key. I quickly swallow down the rest of the soda in my mouth, trying hard not to release a repugnant belch. <laughs> I turn the key over in my hand and smile. My sticky teeth adhere to my lips, and it takes me a few seconds to lick them clean. Tossing the soda bottle into the nearby trash can, I wipe the key clean on my skirt and quickly insert it into the key locker. I twist the key, turn the latch, and swing the locker door open. Inside the dark vault is a single bag. A simple paper pouch like you would get at a grocery store. I pull the paper bag out and take a look inside. Six sacks of 10,000 yen bills fill the bag. I'm not foolish enough to stand here and count it out, but I'm confident the amount is at least pretty close to what I requested. It worked. <laughs> My plan worked. I can hardly believe it. I devised this contingency plan months ago. I waited so long to try it out. All I needed was somebody to reply to their corpse photo. Somebody to try and reject their fate. I wanted to prove that people would bow to fear and do anything to save their own skin. And it seems that I was right. Just one more thing to do. I fold up the paper bag and clutch it tightly. With my free hand, I pull the burner phone out of my handbag. I compose a message to Kotomi Ida, who should be obediently waiting above ground in the train platform. When the next train arrives on your platform, stab the first person to disembark. What? You must kill them. If you escape, leave this prefecture and never return. Oh shit. It's done. When I first opened the coin locker and retrieved the paper bag, I immediately noticed the knife that I'd I had placed inside months ago was missing. Katomi followed every word of my instructions. My message had read, Pack 500,000 bag yen into a bag, put it in the coin locker, 6-4 six, six it, Shinjuku Station, retrieve item, order inside. I've given Katomi an opportunity. She can train another's life for her own. If she kills someone ex exiting the train, Corp Squirrels will spare her life. It's a simple exchange, one that I bet she is willing to make. If she gets away with the murder, she'll flee from this place. I won't see her ever again, and neither will Shinya or Tomoe. To us, she'll be as good as dead. And as for Corpse Girl, well, as long as the body is claimed in exchange, she'll be satisfied. After a few minutes of waiting for a reply to the message, I figure that she's not going to write back. She's probably getting ready to fulfill her task. Keen to witness how this unfolds, I take the nearest escalator up to the train platform. Idiot. Stupid. Fuck! She stabbed a bunch of people! The scene is absolute chaos. It wasn't difficult at all to navigate to this area. All I had to do was follow the echoing screams. I spy, I spy the shadowed form of a body lying on the platform in front of me. I can't make out any details, but a shallow pool of blood reflects the harsh light shining up from, high, from up high. To my surprise and delight, a second body is sprawled across the ground nearby. It's a young woman's corpse, with one arm raised against the side of a vending machine. Adrenaline surges through me at the violent scene. Kutomi Ida. She managed to take out two people. She might be my new favorite person in the entire world. Oh, I thought there was another body. There... There is another body. Just... You guys might, might not be able to see it because of the doggo cam. It's very hard to see it, and it's faint. I hear panicked voices in the background and turn my head slowly. What the... She's stabbing everyone! Two more bodies are on the ground. Two men in expensive looking suits are collapsed in puddles of their own lifeblood. One of the men is still moving and groaning, pleading for somebody to stem the tide of gore. A, fam a familiar, lustful, tingling sensation begins to stir and rise through my belly, my thighs, my pelvis. I feel my toes clench and my breathing grows heavier. There's one more surprise to be had here amidst this beautiful spectacle of carnage. Fucking A, dude. A woman is slumped in one of the plastic chairs that lines a platform. Her head is tilted, her suit jacket stained with red. A thick knife with a black grip protrudes from the side of her neck. A bubbling river of vital fluid cascades around the glimmering blade and pools within her shirt collar. Okay, there's gonna be... There's fingerprints all over that blade from me and Ida, right? Even with her face masked by blood, it doesn't take me more than a few seconds to recognize her identity. Kotomi Ida. Oh shit, she killed herself? Dead. 
What the fuck? I swing around and take in the entire view of the platform, counting up the bodies in the path of slaughter. I'll mine pieces together th theoretical scenario. Yeah, there's four bodies that were stabbed and then she's dead. She wouldn't kill. Why would she kill herself if she went through all that trouble? Kotomi waited as the train doors opened, knife drawn, the knife or waited for the doors. Kotomi waited as the train doors opened, knife drawn. The knife she retrieved from locker 6644. When the first person stepped out of the train, she stabbed him and left him for dead. The body that I first saw laying on the edge of the platform was perfectly lined next to the train to fit this theory. In a panic, Kotomi would have attempted to flee, but bumped into her second victim. The young woman slipped or slumped against the vending machine and cut her down des desperately to make her escape. Or she just wanted to make sure some people were dead. Judging by the wound on Kotomi's own body, I would assume the two businessmen lying face down tried to apprehend her. They must have sustained fatal wounds before finally managed to wrestle the knife away and plunging it into Kotomi's neck. Really? It's all just speculation, but I'm fairly confident that's how this whole event played out. It's probably over in less than 60 seconds. And it couldn't have worked out better for me. I never dared open the... Hoped... I never dared hope that Kotomi would meet her end once this plan had been set into motion. I would have been satisfied with her simply skipping town. They can check her phone records, dude. And even if you match her number, you said it's not actually masked because they can reply back. So it knows your actual number. Oh my god. I feel my legs, although it is a burner phone, so we'll see. I feel my legs weakening under my weight and I'm afraid I might buckle at any second. The waves of radiating heat spreading through my body are causing me to tremble and shake. There's so much blood. It's everywhere. I've seen it in countless photos and thought it had become desensitized to it, but maybe I was wrong. Seeing blood in real life is completely different. I feel faint and pale and excited and aroused. Ugh. I need to get out of here before the police arrive. More importantly, I need to get away before I collapse in a sweaty heap of lust and pleasure. I turn on my heel and sprint down the rising escalator as fast as my squibbering legs will permit. Why were her eyes... They look like they got gouged out. Another morning fueled by coffee. Once again, I didn't manage to get much sleep last night. I want to say it's not my fault, but I know that's not entirely true. Yeah, dude. Space is... Lots of things just happened, dude. <laughs> the grisly visage of all those slain people on the train platform was burned into my mind's eye. Every time I started to drift off to sleep, a splash of blood or a fleck of gore would appear in my thoughts and I would snap awake again. But the sight of Kotomi Ida with a knife sticking out of her neck made me shiver more than a few times. Nevertheless, I'm here now, at the office as usual. Witnessing violence on that level in person was a different experience than I had expected it to be. However, it has helped steal my resolve. I'll need to desensitize, desensitize myself to that kind of carnage if I'm, if I'm to continue with Corpse Girl's ambitions. I set down the second empty can of coffee on my desk and leaned back in my chair. I catch a glimpse of Tomoe tapping away on her keyboard, completely oblivious to what went down last night. There was a news broadcast regarding the event, of course, but the finer details of what occurred have been kept under wraps. It'll probably take the police and the media a little more time to get the story straight. It's not often that a mass killing spree takes over the news, and, whenever, and whether or not the identities of those involved will be revealed is beyond me. For now, I'll assume that Tomoe is in the dark about the event. I don't take her as the kind of girl to be up to date on current events. Even if she did hear about the stabbing, she couldn't possibly know that Kotomi was the culprit. I should probably fill her in later, though. She'll want to know that Corpse Girl claimed her victim, even if it was in kind of a roundabout way. I stretch my arms above my head and let out a small sigh and proceed to crack open a third can of coffee before getting back to work. Holy shit. You got a minute? Check yeah. I wanted to speak to you anyway. Oh, okay. Well, you go first. I'm for sure. Well, I wanted to thank you for killing Kotomi Ida. I don't know how you did it, but thanks. Huh? How did you know she died? Oh, come on. She didn't come in today, right? And there was that brutal stabbing incident over at the station last night. It don't take a genius to put three and three together. That shit went down so close to here, where we spend so much of our time. Chances were good that it affects someone you know. I shake my head at her logic. The city is home to more people than you could commit than you can count. 
I don't know how she came to this conclusion, but the fact that she's actually correct just blows my mind. Well, uh, yeah. I guess that's it then. I'm thankful for serious. Yeah, Corpse Girl really did me and Shinya solid. If there's ever anything you need, like, no matter how dirty, then count me in. I owe ya. Is she coming on to us? Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. Sure. So, like, what'd you want to say to me? I was just gonna fill you in. Oh, I was going to tell you that Kotomi is dead. <laughs> Beat you to it, skank! Hmm. But I got a question or two. How'd you get someone to go on a killing spree and take Kotomi out along with the others? I mean, it wasn't you going around stabbing people. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> stabby, stabby. No, of course not. Oh? It kind of happened outside my control. I wouldn't admit that. Hmm. I sent Kotomi a photo I, mean, I, I just have my ways. Just like Corpse Girl's standard mode of operation. And I gave her the instructions to kill someone. If she didn't want the circumstances of the photo to come true. Holy shit. She kind of ran with it, I guess. Seems like she took out four people before someone fought back and stabbed her. <sighs> I think I'm in love with her, to be honest. Me. <laughs> you weird slut! That's horrible! This cast of people are all fucked up. <sighs> what can I say? She went above and beyond. Still, thanks. Really. Shinya will be stoked. That's okay. Just doing Corpse Girl's job. Where is Shinya, anyway? Oh, he was in earlier. Went home a bit early because he wasn't feeling well. Think it was just because he was dreading running into cold. Oh, no. But... Oh, no, he's going to feel bad. Oh, no. Well, he'll sort himself oh, I hope we don't lose our friend. Hmm. You know, Noriko, you've changed a lot. I have? Totes. I mean... I know you act different around me now that we're friends, but it's more than that. You look, I don't know, kind of better, healthy or something. Been taking my meds. Uh, why do you talk like you're drunk? Oh, I didn't know about that. Serious though. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just see it different now that I know who you really are. Maybe. Anyway, I'm gonna get going. You wanna grab a bite or something? Not today, sorry. Maybe another time? Sure thing. Right, see you, skank! Tomoe slaps my shoulder... Tomoe slaps my shoulder affectionately and takes off toward the train station. If I remember correctly, she did say that she'd be happy to help me out in the future, no matter how dirty the work is. I'll definitely have to take her up on the offer if the need arises. Another interesting thought crosses my mind. Tomoe seemed kind of surprised that I managed to manipulate Tomoe into going on a killing spree. To be honest... I'm also amazed I managed to pull that off. Which gets me thinking, would it be possible to manipulate more people in the future? After all, I came out for the last night's ordeal with 500,000 yen. In cash and a bunch of bodies claimed in Corpse Girl's name. It's a fascinating prospect. There might be something to this. If I can su successfully pull the right strings, Corpse Girl's ultimate ambition might be fulfilled sooner than I thought. I continue to dwell on the unlimited possibilities as I make my way to the station. Standing on the train platform, and, and thankfully not the same one from last night, which has been temporarily closed, I stare into space, completely lost in thought. I start to wonder how Kojiro is getting on with finding us a suitable location. As I fantasize about having an abandoned warehouse or factory to call our own, my phone cries out desperately for attention. I retrieve it from my handbag and glance at the screen. Kojiro is requesting a noise voice chat. Ugh. Excuse me, I apologize. I absentmindedly wonder if I read, if he read my mind and knew I was thinking about him as I answered the call. See the place? Mm. What if I'm busy right now? Ah, sauce. Busy? No. Right? Want to see the place? I roll my eyes inside to just go along with it. After all, I'm dying to move ahead and see what kind of location he has secured for our work. Yep. Where is it? Mad. Shin Okubo, behind K Town. An abandoned factory. Just what you wanted. Shin Okubo? That's suspiciously convenient. Why? I work in Shinjuku. It's just one station away on my train line. Okay, I'm heading there now. You in? I'm in. How do I get to the factory from the station? 
Exit the station to Okubodori. That's K-Town proper. I'll message you the full address. Okay, you got it. Just head through Koreatown. I'll be there soon. Mad. Bye. Kojira ends the call and I immediately receive a message with the factory's address. Seems easy enough to get to. I feel a bit nervous about going there. It's a new place and it's located in a town I don't normally travel to. Last time we did this, we had a problem. Although we've been taking our meds and stuff, so hopefully we'll be okay. But for some reason, I feel energetic. I actually feel enthused about it. Maybe it's because I've, I haven't hid away, hidden away at home all day. I've been at work, around other people. Perhaps that helps me acclimate to the concept of going somewhere new. And the chance of someone sneaking up behind me and strangling me in the broad daylight are pretty slim. I think. As I put my phone away, the train pulls up to the platform. The same train that was going to take me home will take me to Shin Okubo. It's the very next stop from here. I'm a little wary on how convenient this is turning out to be. Could be true. Could be Kojiro's luring me into a trap, but I don't know. I think he genuinely wants to be involved with Corpse Girl's work. I board the train and stand by the doors, ready to disembark at the next station. The abandoned factory is almost exactly how I managed it, or imagined it would be. Tall, broad, foreboding. Eroded and worn down, with brick walls and steel sheeting covered with thick layers of black exhaust. Gigantic metal pri pipes protrude from within and wrap around the exterior, only to re-enter through vents here and there. A series of ventilation shafts and chimneys line the roof, but they don't release even a single puff of smoke. This place has been shut down for a long, long time. The front entrance is located at the rear of a small parking lot. It's a simple steel door that has been chained up and padlocked. Further along the side of the building is a landing dock, an expansive asphalt that leads to the concrete path and a giant roller door. In the dock sits a derelict van, covered in brown tarpaulin. I don't know what that is. This place is amazing! You haven't seen inside yet. I glance towards the steel door, securely chained shut, and wonder if anyone has entered within the last decade. If Kajira has checked out the inside, then he did well covering his tracks. How do we get in? Around here. I follow his lead as he walks towards the corner of the building. Steel railing... The steel railing bars are past, but he swiftly hurdles over it and continues down the side of the factory. I take a minute to climb the railing, making sure not to twist an ankle as I stick the landing on the other side. Kojiro points to an open window. Thankfully, there seems to be enough of a gap for someone as large as Kojiro to slip. I shouldn't have an issue getting in either, despite my thin, heavy set frame. He slides in first, and I quickly follow. For being banded for decades, this place is tidy as fuck. And with that, I find myself inside the factory. The place is huge. It's an open plan design, and it's pretty much empty. A few straight pieces of odd machinery line one wall, a small forklift, a pallet jack, and a bunch of buckets and mops catch my attention. All of this could be useful for our little operation. A number of iron workbenches are piled up in a stack. They look heavy and rusted, but they would probably make good tables for resting corpses on. Aside from these miscellaneous items, the factory is essentially bare. The concrete floor is in bad shape, cracked and worn from probably 50 years of use. The thick brick walls are scorched in some places and dented in others. Still. It's perfect. Thanks. Figured you'd approve. How did you know about this place? <laughs> it was already part of his plan. Like, if I could find a way to get corpses out of here, this is where I'd do it. Kojiro doesn't answer immediately. His eyes turn to the stupendously high ceiling with its array of glass sunlights beaming light down upon us. After a minute, he turns back dad to me. Used to work here. His dad? What did he do here? This place used to manufacture steel fencing, chain link fences, barbed wire, chicken mesh, that kind of thing. Huh, I see. A lot of that is imported now. There's still an industry here, but dad couldn't compete. Went out of business maybe a dozen years ago. Died about a month later. He died? That's how it goes. I'm sorry. We weren't close. Well, we could have been closer. So, how come no one else bought the factory? Look around. It's a dump. Who'd want it? Cost a fortune to fix or rebuild. Wonder if it was waiting for us. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. Definitely all seems too good to be true, but this is the real deal. 
This is our factory now. On this, right? Right. Okay. Good. Welcome home then. Or something. Let's work well together. Roger that. I've been entered an unlikely partnership with Kojiro. We've obtained a base of operations safe from prying eyes. The next step is to fill this factory with corpses and carry on with Corpse Girl's grand scheme. Thanks for accompanying me home. Maybe we won't finish the day. Holy shit. No problem. Should I come upstairs? No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. By the way, when are we starting work? Well, as soon as I... I mean... As soon as Corpse Girl receives another request for a death, we can start on it. Oh, no grand heist from the morgue first? Think about it. It's important that the cadavers I use match the details of my victims. I won't know what kind of cadaver to use until I receive a photo of the victim. Guess that makes sense. What's the big plan anyway? How do we lift corpses from the morgue? I had a feeling he would ask about this sooner or later. I did tell him that I had a perfect idea, after all. Mm, I imagine the biggest issue is writing off the bodies, so to speak. If a cadaver goes missing or is unaccounted for, there will be an investigation. They're Am gonna right? be used to... The, it was cremated. Excuse, right? Guess so. We need to be able to take the bodies away from the morgue without anyone ever knowing they're gone. So, the solution is simple. We only take the cadavers that are due to be cremated. Okay, wise guy. The delivery company picks up the cremains nearly every day. Is that what they call them? Cremains? Huh? Cremains? That's what the ashes are called. Apparently. Oh, right. So what do we hand over? Empty canisters? It's simple. Fake ashes. Yeah, right. Fake ashes. Like I just have those lying around. Kujiro stops mid sentence, stares straight at me. Huh. Might be onto something. <laughs> Don't tell me you do have those lying around. Hmm. Not fake ashes. Real cremains. Bodies are cremated every day. Wouldn't be hard to take a bit off the top. Huh? Could probably get away with like a quarter. <laughs> People would be like, um, why is this I'm a quarter full? Confused. What are you talking about? Zaz, every time someone gets cremated, I'll collect a quarter of the ashes. Store them, put them aside. It won't take long to fill up a whole canister. Why do I have... I had a desktop wallpaper. I thought that was the music from the game. Let me see if I follow you. You gather up a little bit of ash from every cadaver that gets cremated. And I couldn't find out which one it was to turn off the music because the game wouldn't minimize. Whenever we want to hoist a body from the morgue, we use the previously gathered ashes to fill a canister. We slap a label on it that says, these are the remains of so-and-so. Then we take so-and-so out of the morgue. We record that their body has been cremated, when in reality, it's been snatched from the morgue. How are you going to get it out? I imagine the canister of ashes just gets picked up with all the others going out on the same day. Pretty much. We also put a token in the canister. A token? Like a dog tag. Has the cadaver's serial number engraved on it. Normally attached to the body before cremation. They don't burn. Let's the cremains be identified later. Huh, I see. Can we get our hands on those tokens? Sure. The bodies we're lifting from the morgue are due for cremation anyway. I can get the tokens engraved without a hitch. Proper serial numbers and all. Okay, good. This is getting complicated, though. There's quite a bit we have to remember to do. Don't worry. I'll take you through it when we need to. Most importantly... I'll need to start gathering portions of pre- I was gonna say, if he's been working on the morgue for 15 years, 12 years, whatever it was, it should be a simple need to switch in his routine. In advance. Yeah. Thanks. Really. No props. But big question remains. How do you get the body out? What's that? How do we move cadavers out of the morgue? Ever tried lifting a stiff? 
Not easy. And you're no bodybuilder. No offense. Um, none taken? Look, security in the joint is minimal. I'm there alone like 90% of the time. We don't have to worry too much about getting busted. As long as we cover our tracks, of course, and only take cadavers we've written off, as you put it. Bodies nobody will come looking for. Hang on. Are there security cameras, alarm systems, anything like that? Don't think so. Plenty in the hospital proper, though. That's fine. As long as the morgue is clear. Still, answer my question. How do we move the bodies? You got a hearse? A truck? No, but surely we could get something. What about a small van? She just got 500 grand. Well, I think it's at like 5,000. 500,000 yen? Is that like $5,000? No. Need a driver's license. And not just that, needs to be suitable for a van. A medium vehicle license, I think. Oh. I don't have a license, but... Surely driving a van can't be that hard, right? Don't we rent it. We can just rent a van and wing it. That's stupid. Uh-huh. Can't even rent one without a license. Hmm. Okay, then. Do you have the right license? Don't look at me. I've never driven a vehicle in my life. <sighs> yeah, me neither. Great. So this is a bust. I put my head in my hands. We got so far. We secured a factory, planned our heist, and... Mm. Hang on. on. Yeah, you really didn't think any of this through. I put my phone on my bag and skimmed through my noise contacts. I'd prefer to text than call, but I'm too impatient right now to wait for a response. I start a voice chat request and wait for the recipient to answer. It's Tomoe. Hey, Skank. What up? Asking for that dirty favor. Tomoe, hey. You got a sec? Sure. He's gonna be like, wait, another person knows? That's not good. Do you have a driver's license? Yep. No car, though. Okay, what kind of vehicle is your license good for? Uh, like, cars and scooters. Not vans? I mean, I don't think so. I curse under my breath. Yo, what's the problem? You need a lift or something? Not quite. I need to, uh, pick something up. Oh, something big? Is that why you need a van? Yeah. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. I can't even rent a van with my license. Yeah, I know. I shoot a deathly glance at Kujiro and he just shrugs. A look of, I told you so on his face. I mean, <laughs> if you're desperate, you could just buy a van. Huh? I see secondhand vans listed for sale all the time. Check out the noise marketplace in the classifieds pages. No one will check for a license on a private sale. It's just one chump selling a van to another chump. Holy shit. You're yeah. right. <laughs> You're a genius. Well, I don't know about that. Thank you. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't object to a driving gig, would you? <laughs> I do owe you one, I suppose. You want me to drive a van, though? If I get busted on my license, I'll go to prison. <laughs> you won't go to prison. It'll be a fine at most, I think. <laughs> I look at Kujiro and he gives me another shrug. <laughs> uh, look, if you get a fine, I'll pay for it. That cool? Yeah, what the hell? What are the chances of getting busted anyway, right? These people are not smart. Can you text me the deeds or whatever? The address and stuff? Shinji just got to my place, so I gotta get the door. Okay, will do. Thanks, Tomoe. Sure. Later, slot. I only call and feel a wave of excitement flooding through me. You get all that? More or less. You girls sure are loud. Sorry. So, I'll need you to do me a favor. By van, right? Yeah. You're a big, strong man. You won't get ripped off. I'm just a poor little girl. Cut it out. I'll do it. But you got the money? As a matter of fact. I finally remember swindling a cool 500,000 yen from Kotomi Ida just this week. We've got a 500,000 budget. Will that do? Hmm. Maybe. Can't get you anything modern, but I'm sure it's enough. Hmm. Great. 
You think you can get something tomorrow? I'll try. The noise marketplace, right? That's right. Well, no promises. I'll do my best. He said you, you girls... Wait, he said we're loud, not noisy, right? Thank you. Really. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm heading off. Unless you actually do want me to come upstairs? No. Roger that. See you tomorrow. Probably. Kojiro turns with little more than a wave, exits the building, crosses the street. I quickly ascend the stairs with a slight spring in my step. I'm more eager than usual to get the day started. When I get out of bed, I take my medication, just like usual. I've been good at keeping up with it lately, sticking to my newfound convictions. I wash down the tablets with a glass of water. After getting dressed, I put on my makeup. The same morning routine, the same movements, the same actions. But I feel good today. I'm not dragging my feet. I'm happy that things are moving forward, both for me and for Corpse Girl. As I'm packing my handbag, I receive a call from Owie. Owie. I haven't spoken to her for a little while. In fact, the last time we spoke, I think it was way back when she didn't come into the office for her first day of work. <clears throat> that was nearly two weeks ago. Shit, I really dropped the ball. I'm supposed to be trying to look after her, but I've been so caught. Oh, so caught up with my own crap. In addition, I've been actively trying to put her out of my mind in order to get over my feelings for her. And now I feel like I've just neg neglected the poor girl at a time when she needs me the most. I hurriedly answered the call, too guilty to keep her waiting any longer. Owie! Hey! Noriko? I'm so glad you called. Oh, I've been a terrible friend. I haven't kept in touch with you. No, no, it's okay. Really. I've been busy. I should have called you earlier. Seriously, I'm sorry. It's okay. Did you want to talk to me about something? Yes. Well, I think so. Please, you can talk to me about anything. I'm Noriko, remember? <laughs> yes, that's true. Watch, she's gonna be like, I'm just glad you're alive. Um, so, I wanted to ask... Have you ever heard of something oh, shit. called Corpse Girl's website? Owie knows about Corpse Girl? Yeah, I've heard rumors. Really? Wow. So, does it really exist? Um, apparently, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't find any solid information about it. What is it? Uh, well... How do I explain this to her? Should I explain this to her? I was so sweet and innocent. Does she need to know about a website designed to conjure the omnipresent specter of death? It's all just hearsay. I wouldn't take it too seriously. Oh, but I want to know. Well, people say that you can use the site to request somebody's death. Request its death? But, but how? How does it work? Really, I don't know. I've heard that the victim receives a photo of their own corpse. The photo is supposedly sent from the future. Whoa. Really? That, that sounds like something from a Thank long ago. God that means how he didn't request her death. Uh, yeah. Suppose it does. Uh, have you ever used the website? Uh, of course not, silly. What kind of person do you think I am? <sighs> Sorry. Why are you so excited about this anyway? Oh, um, no reason. I kind of just like weird stuff like that. Also, who did request our death then? You do? I never knew that. We never figured that out. <laughs> you don't know everything about me, Miss Noriko. Even though, even through the phone, I can sense that Aoi is in a happy mood than usual. Her cheery voice gives me a sense of nostalgia, and I think back to the time we spent together in school. Don't go using the site, okay? It's not good to mess with crap like that. Don't worry. I wouldn't use something so scary. Oh, thank God. I just heard about it, and, well, I got kind of curious is all. All right. By the way... Where'd you hear about it? How is everything? Are you still working at the maid cafe? Uh, yeah. And that customer of yours? around you're not in trouble 
are you? No. A light suddenly switches on in my head, and I realize why Aoi was asking about Core Scrolls website. Uh huh. Aoi? You're not thinking about requesting that guy's death, are you? Uh. Oh. Aoi? You told me that you didn't even want to get the police involved. Now you want to do Yeah. Aoi is, uh. It's very sad. That's why I think in the first part of the game, she brings up the site to the stranger that she meets in the Emmy. Complete stranger, she brings it up. Because I think she's trying to get information that someone can confirm it does work. Because then she would use it. I feel terrible for Aoi. Part of me wants to scream for her to do it. To request that asshole's death and let me or Corpse Girl take care of him. Part of me knows that she can't handle it. She would be crushed with guilt if he really did die. <laughs> She's delicate and emotional. Being responsible for the death of another human being, a family member at that, would devastate her. My best advice for you is to go to the police. Don't mess with requesting his death. Hey, I gotta go now. <laughs> oh, owie, you made me cry. I can see her pouting face in my mind. That face makes me... That face she makes when she doesn't get something she wants. She's not a child's person, but her disappointment is often evident in her expressions. You soon, okay? hey, bye. I love her voice. I want to know who the voice actor was. I get the nagging feeling that she's going to do something rash, but really, can I blame her? That guy, whoever he is, has been has harassing her for so long. It's only natural she'd be at her wit's end. So, if she makes the request, I'll take care of him. And if the guilt eats away at her, I'll be there to comfort her. It's the least I can do as her friend, Noriko. It's the least I can do as Corpse Girl. As I resume getting ready for work, I can't help but replay the conversation in my head. Aoi definitely seemed excited about the prospect of Corpse Girl's, Corpse Girl's website being the real deal. Excited, eager, filled with anticipation. That same dizzying feeling I get whenever I'm waiting for a victim's death. Waiting for a victim's death. And then it hits me, and I immediately realize why Aoi was so excited. Why she called me in an uncharacteristically talk uncharacteristically talkative mood. She wanted my opinion on Corpse Girl's operation. She wanted affirmation. Confirmation. See? I called that. She wanted re reassurance that her victim really was going to perish. I'm going to check the website. She doesn't know what, that I'm Corpse Girl. She simply wanted a knowledgeable friend to confirm if the rumors are true. Because she has already submitted her victim's photo to the website. And she can't wait to find out if he's going to die. Throwing my handbag to the floor, I grab my laptop from the bed. It's right where I left it before falling asleep last night. I booted up and logged into Corp Corpse Girl's website. A tiny little blinking notification that I dream about seeing greets me. Three new requests. Three new requests? Holy shit. How? I can't believe what I'm seeing. One of them is going to be Emmy. I quickly keep the photos to download. Shit! Ho! That bitch! It's all three of them. Holy shit. Right, space? It's all of them. So, so what I'm guessing it, it's strange that that girl's name is Kurosawa, which is my last name. So I, I thought it was like my sister or a relative. But Noriko said that Kurosawa was on ice or her sister was on ice, which I took that as she's dead. Maybe that she meant it more of like she's 
she's out of the family or she doesn't talk to, talk to us anymore. But I originally thought the manager might have been involved with the scheme. But since he's not here, it makes me think he's not. But the, Kurosawa, the other girl, wants them all three dead. Because they know they were in on it together. Plus, she'll get to keep all the money. Holy shit. After a few seconds, they all open up and I flick them, flick through them with a dumbfounded expression, expression plastered across my face. Well, I put together that they're wearing the same outfit. They're all female. So that rules out my theory that Aoi has requested the death of the guy harassing her. I suppose she really was just excited about the prospect of the website. I hadn't actually gone through with anything yet. But what really surprised me about the new request is that I recognize one of the young women, yet another person I'm familiar with. Out of all the people in the world, what are the chances of knowing multiple people were requested through the website? Or maybe I do have something with my brain where I am projecting these things or like, like a, a fucking fight club kind of thing where I have two different lives and I don't know, they don't know about each other, which could explain why I know multiple people or all the people, but I, I doubt that's the case. I think it's just coincidence. The girl is Amy Katsuno. If I remember correctly. You have oh, returned. Big Monarch. You scared the crap out of me. Thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome to the stream. How you doing, my friend? Eat a cookie. Cookie for you. Hey. Hey. Wake up, hey, the cookie. Oh, you'll give them that cookie. I appreciate you. How you doing? She went to senior high school with Aoi Shinya and myself. I never liked her much. In fact, she was somewhat of a bully toward me. Nothing more than name calling, but in my mind, that's as bad as anything else. It's not hard to imagine someone wanting her dead. The other two victims are strangers to me. A ditzy looking airhead with pink hair and a worn out strained woman who could be anywhere from 20 to 40. To get three requests all at once is remarkable. How am I going to work through all these? Yep, still on the grind. How you doing? It's been a minute. It's a shame that my operation with Kojiro isn't fully set up yet. It would be fantastic to go all out on these requests, secure some courses, and take some truly convincing photos. Well, there's no use stressing over that. The best thing I can do is simply get to work on forging some photos. In fact, maybe I'll scope work today so I can dedicate the time to crafting these photos. It's Friday after all. It's pretty much the weekend. No one will care if I don't show up to, at the office. I nod to myself as if convincing my own mind that I'm making the right choice. I load up the database of the deceased. Hmm. I step outside the apartment building, squinting in order to defend myself from the overwhelming rays of sunlight assaulting my eyes. As narrow as my vision is, I'm able to determine that Kojiro is nowhere to be seen. Where is he? Once again, he's making me wait. As I mumble under my breath, I hear the screeching of tires and watch in disbelief as the van pulls up toward my apartment, apartment building. What's both of them? It's a beat up old thing that may have once been white, but it is now covered in grime. The windows are either tinted or encrusted with dirt. To my surprise, the window on the passenger side lowers and I see some familiar faces. Next to Kojiro in the driver's seat is none other than Tomoe. She's waving and greeting like a lunatic. Hey, it's Gank. Hi. So, how's this? My face must reveal my fury because Kojiro flinches before I can even respond. Where did you even get this piece of shit? <laughs> it works, dude. Some guy. <laughs> some guy? What guy? Uh, some guy from the noise marketplace. Only wanted 250 for it. So, here's the other half of your money back. You're welcome. He holds up the paper bag I gave him earlier. It seems to have a bit of weight to it. Still have a bit of weight to it. When Kujiro strolled at my apartment earlier this morning, he told me he'd found a great deal on a van. I had a good feeling about it, and I handed him the money to go and secure the vehicle. However, he mentioned that he needed a driver to haul it back. He asked me to call Tomoe for assistance. Thankfully, Tomoe agreed to help. An opportunity to leave the office was good enough for her. I never expected her and Kojiro to come back driving a death trap on wheels. Unbelievable. We're not going to die in this <laughs> thing, are we? Who knows? It has AC! Oh, hell yeah, it has AC. She only had about 3,700. Is that what... 250,000 yen is? I kind of figured 500,000 yen was about $5,000. Great. 
Did you ask the guy if anyone has ever been murdered in it? What do you care? He's gonna see a lot of corpses before we're done with it. He's got a point, but I still don't feel good about it. Uh, we're picking up corpses in this thing. <laughs> it's important. And you owe me one, remember? <laughs> that shit's rough. <laughs> I'm driving, but come on. Oh, that's funny. Ugh, whatever. As long as I don't have to touch nothing. I'm doing the heavy lifting. Don't worry. Come on, he leans over Kajiro and squeezes past him awkwardly to speak to me in a hushed voice. Who is this weirdo anyway? When you said you wanted me to go pick up a van, I thought you'd put me in decent company. <sighs> Sorry. He's my, uh... That was the whole amount. She, that, 500,000 yen is $3,700? Holy shit. This is all for corpse girl shit, right? Well, whatever. I'm cool with it. Just hope this dude doesn't try to cut me or nothing. She pulls back and gives Kojiro some air. Anyway, get him. Huh? Why? Going to the morgue. Hang on, hang on. Wait, Big Marner, are you guffs? You want to do this now? Why is my brain telling me that? If not now, when? Any other time after I've had a chance to get organized. Hmm. You have requests, right? Yeah, we have three. Yeah, three, actually. Right. So let's go get some bodies that match. But you haven't even had time to put aside any ashes. You were gonna collect a little from each cremation and put them aside and... Already done. Seriously? Worked night shift last night. Got like three or four canisters saved up. How? You said you've got three requests? Well, how convenient. But... That's this a lot of people you cremated. Is your idea. You want to do it or not? I'm just not ready. Kojiro thinks he can just rock up to my place and take me on, and take me to the morgue somewhere I've never been. I've had no time to prepare myself. No time to even think about it. Visiting this factory yesterday left me feeling pretty exhausted. Having to tack on another new place today is simply too much to ask. I told you I'd guide you through the process, right? There's nothing to worry about. You don't understand. I... I've never been to the morgue before. Tomoe shoots me a quizzical look from behind Kojiro. I'm nervous? I think I understand. For me, it's the most relaxing place on earth. My little sanctuary. Really? Sure. No one to talk to me. No one to bother me. Unless you count the dead, of course. I suppose that's true. And you won't be alone. You've got me and this chick. It's Tomoe. Thank you very much. Right. Sauce. I take a deep breath and brace myself for the next thing I'm about to say. Okay. Let's go. Kojiro is right. Everything will be okay. I need to get used to be going to the morgue. It's a new place, but it's going to be an essential place. I tell myself this is all for Corpse Girl. For me. For us. Kodrill pulls the van sliding door open and I take a careful step inside. The morgue is a lot colder than I imagined it would be. Of course it would be cold. I berate myself for not bringing a sweater, but there's nothing I can do about it now. You think he would warn us too. The place has an icy, otherworldly feel to it. It's depressing and clinical and devoid of hope. And then there's the stench. It's not as overwhelming as I feared it might be, but it lingers and claws at my senses. It clings inside my nostrils and mouth and the very interior of my skull. It's very easy to understand why Kajiro's clothes always smell like this place. Once odor gets a grip on you, it doesn't let go. Honey, I'm home. That means we're all going to be smelling like corpses. A poor joke and poor taste, even for Kajiro. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Even Tomoe is looking a bit paler than normal. I'm surprised she accomplished it. Accompanying us inside after she spent the whole drive over insisting that she would stay in the van. They store bodies in here? Of course. See all these lockers? They're cold chambers. Pretty much all of them are full. A body in each. Fucking disgusting. Noriko? Yeah? I keep things in order around here. 
Chambers on the left wall are cadavers due for cremation. And what about the lockers on the right wall? No touchy-touchy. They're new arrivals or they're being collected for some reason or other. Autopsy, funeral, etc. Got it. So, we can only make use of the cadavers in the lockers on the left wall. That's a bingo. I listlessly, want, I listlessly wander over to the left wall. There must be dozens of cold chambers here, all lined up in neat rows. Some doors are slightly ajar, and peeking inside and reveals that they're empty. But the vast majority are sealed tight. Documents within sleeping soundly. Hey, question. Shoot. How do I know who is in each locker? Like, if I wanted to get an old woman's corpse, do I just have to search blindly? Nah. Okay, then what do I do? Come here. I walk over to Kajiro and fall onto a large computer monitor monitor mounted on the far wall. He taps on a little panel inset into the wall, and a shelf pops out, revealing a keyboard and mouse. Familiar with databases? Somewhat. Perhaps all my data entry experience at Temujin will pay off here. It's pretty simple anyway. Live database contains the current inventory items. Ew. Well, <laughs> you refer to these bodies as inventory items? What would you call them? Well, like, they used to be real people and shit, right? Why not show some respect? I don't understand. They're cadavers. I put a trembling hand on Tomoe's shoulder. I want to comfort her, but the act of doing so is still alien to me. Uh, don't worry about him, Tomoe. Uh, he can be a bit insensitive. <laughs> He's a freak. Wow. Ouch. Tomoe scoffs and makes a gesture with her middle finger. I'm a little surprised that she's so bothered by this. It's kind of funny that she holds respect for the dead, but not for so, so much for the living. Okay, so I can search this database for bodies that match my needs. Yep, just use the filters at the top. Not many categories, but it has the basics. Age range, gender, name. Not that that'll be useful to you. Actually, that's about it. It's enough. It'll save some time at the very least. Okay, so you want to hoist three bodies today, right? You said you have three requests? Yeah, but... This place is kind of overwhelming. I'm hesitant to bite off more than we can chew. What's the game plan, then? How about we just take one body today? We'll take it back to the factory, work on it, and see how we go. Works for me. Here, use the database. Kajiro steps away from the monitor indicates that I should use it. I rest my sweaty hands on the keyboard and feel the cold metal buttons sti uh, sting my skin. Metal keyboard. It's very fitting for this cold, lifeless place. I have three requests currently in the works. I managed to get photos edited for all three of them, thanks to taking the day off from the office. There's Emi Katsuna, the bully I went to school with. Then there's the pink-haired girl and the woman that looked tired and worn out. The only body that's going to match is Emmy's, huh? I should try and find a cadaver that matches the appearance of one of those victims. I use the database's filter to search for females, and then I narrow down the age range to young adult. There are a lot of hits, just how many people are entombed here, and just how many people are entombed here anyway. I skim through the list of results. Since their names are meaningless to me, they might as well all be identical. But the column data containing cold chamber identification codes is interesting. I point one of the results out to Kojiro. Hey, how do I know what these numbers mean? This one here is 64AB. This one is number 31AA. Ah, okay. Letters correspond to location. First letter refers to left wall or right wall. Second letter refers to top row or bottom row. Um, give me an example. Okay, this one? Number 64AB. The A means it's on the left wall and the B means it's on the bottom row. Left wall. That's the side I can choose from, right? The body's due for cremation? Yep. So I could grab number 64AB if I wanted. Up to you. But this one here... Let's see... Number right, we're all top. BA. <laughs> could I grab that? No. The first letter is B, so that's on the right wall. No go. Not scheduled for cremation. I think I get it. Thanks. I make a mental list of cold chambers on the left wall that fit my needs. I'm going to start cracking open some of these sarcophagi. Haha, <laughs> that's a new one. Mad. I hope that my nervousness isn't showing. I can't, I almost can't believe that I'm about to examine corpses in the flesh. 
Corpse Girl would be proud of me right now. As I walk over to the left of the cold chambers, I catch a glimpse of Tomoe. She's standing by the exit, swiping on her phone as, I t as she taps her foot. I reach the first locker I want to look at. Here we go. There's a, met there's a metal handle in the front chamber. It's paired with a release button, which I gather has to be pressed in at the same time as the handle is pulled forward. I grip the handle tightly, press the button, and pull with all my strength. A hiss echoes throughout the morgue as frigid, pressurized air billows out of the chamber. The door is now wide open, revealing the darkness within the locker. I peer inside. I can make out the shape of a body bag laying atop the sliding tray inside the locker. I thought the body would slide out automatically. No? It just pulled the tray out, like you'd pull out an oven tray. Yeesh. I kind of thought Tomari would have something to say about that. I take a deep breath and grab the edge of the tray, then slide it out. Thankfully, the, si the thick rollers along the bottom rail do most of the work, and once it has momentum, the tray slides all the way out of the chamber. My prize is revealed at last. A musty white body bag packed full with a de decomposing corpse. Um, now what? Just unzip the HRP. The what? Fujiro rolls his eye. Uh, the body bag. Unzip it, but cover your nose. It is as I told. My left hand pinches my nostrils and my right hand grips the tag attached to the body's zipper. I tug the tag down on I tug the tag down and down and drag it along the length of the bag and unzip. And the un and the zip makes a familiar zzz sound, and I smell the decomposing corpse and vomit on the ground and fall to my knees trying to catch my vomit and hold my nose closed at the same time. Ew. Um you don't have to unzip the whole thing. You just need to see their face, right? Tears well up in my eyes, and I can't help but cry as, as the stench strikes me across the face again and again, and the river of bile and sick pouring down my clothes feel like a searing hot cattle prod against my skin. The sight of the corpse in the bag flickers in my vision and sears itself to my retinas, and I can't get it out of my head, even when I close my eyes and I can't get it out of my head. And I can't... Whoa. Wait, wait. Hold on. There's no periods in this. The sight of the corpse in the bag flickers in my vision and sears itself to my retinas and I can't get it out of my head even when I close my eyes and I can't get it out of my head and I can't not see it anymore and I can't help but think of my own reflection and how, how much I re resemble Noriko and Corpse Girl and the Corpse Girl and the corpse in the bags all mixed together in some completely fucked up hybrid of decaying flesh and bone. Holy shit! <sighs> that would give Trump's run on sentence to run from its money. I think Kojiro or Tomoe or Aoi grabs my shoulders to drag me. Aoi. Holy shit, there's no more periods in this one either. I think Kojiro or Tomoe or Aoi grabs my shoulders and drag me away from the body, but Aoi isn't here anyway, and the hands feel so strong and warm and not brittle and lifeless like mine and not slender and perfect like Aoi's, but I get dragged away regardless, and my eyes are waiting, and the fluorescent lights on the ceiling are magnified by my tears, by my tears, and I want to tear my eyes out and get the sight of the corpse out of my mind. I've seen so many corpses over the last year. I've seen countless photos of bodies dismembered and asphyxiated and electrocuted and shot and maimed and drowned. Yet the decaying corpse in the body bag, or the HRP, as Kujiro called it, is worse than any of them. And it's worse than anything I could ever imagine. And it's worse than me and worse than Corpse Girl. And for a fleeting moment, I begin to question what I've spent the last year doing, what I'm doing involving myself with the dead and buried. Okay, yeah, she's having a break. The frantic screams of a girl resound in my ears and my eyes and my nostrils, and I've I think she's calling my name, but it doesn't sound like my name. It sounds like Noriko or something along those lines. Maybe Yuriko. Maybe she's calling out for my sister, but my sister isn't here and Noriko isn't here. And I'm the only one here lying on the side of the cold tile floor and covered in warm vomit and hot tears. And I feel the body lying next to me and smiling and offering me a cup of coffee from the lovely French cafe I went to one time. I picture that lifeless corpse in my mind smiling and calling my name like bitch queen or goth bitch or bitch bitch or basically just any senseless name she can pair with the word bitch, the word I hate so much that Yuriko used to always call me and mother used to always call me and that word that carries so much hate and contempt and yet rolls off the tongue so easily. Our mom called us that? The lifeless corpse keeps calling me names, keeps taunting me, keeps growing out her long blonde hair and she taunts me with her fake smile and fake eyelashes and she corners me in the classroom and pulls her... My hair and rips out a fistful of it and laughs and calls me bitchy bitch 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 and screams and cackles and i realize why she's always bullied me like this and i hate her for it because i never did anything to her now she's talking about emmy i never did anything to emmy katsunu but she always bullied me she always bullied but she never bullied aoi because she was always she was allowed to bully aoi because no one was allowed to bully aoi because the teachers all said so they all said she's been through too much already because but it's okay to bully noriko or me or or noriko that's fine they all said but amy is like you bully me 
So Emmy liked to bully me and call me the bitch and bitch, and she liked to pull my hair out, but this, that's fine because she, hair grows back eventually, and it meant that she didn't bully Aoi, so in a way, I was protecting Aoi, and that's all that's ever really mattered. Ha! Huh? What the fuck, dude? Is everyone else along for this ride? And the corpse of my mind is an Emmy, but it might as well be. It might as well be her, and might... And maybe I can make it her. Maybe the corpse can become Emmy Katsuna. And if I send her the photograph in the corpse, then she might kill herself. She might kill hers. Kill her. Fuck. Holy shit. My neck cracks loudly and sit up straight. I blink a few times to clear the tears out of my eyes and the worried faces of Kodiro and Tomoe appear in my vision. You okay? What the fuck, Noriko? I spit the remnants of vomit out of my mouth. You sure about that? You don't fucking look fine. You chucked up all over the place. <laughs> She'll be right. That's one of my favorite phrases from vomit. Kind of thing before. Chuck. What do you mean? Pretty normal to react like that to a decomposing cadaver. Surprised you're okay, to Tomo? It's Tomoe. Shit. <clears throat> yeah, I'm fine. I don't like him, but I've seen corpses before. Have you? Well, I thought Noriko had too. Just, just pictures, I guess. I'm not forgetting the carnage I witnessed at the train station thanks to Kotomi Ida. However, seeing a stiff cadaver in a body bag was so much more overwhelming. Right. Are you really corpse girl? <laughs> Apparently. Come on, let's get you up. Someone grabs me in a sort of bear hug and lifts me to my feet. Sorry about the vomit. It's fine. It's fucked up. But <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Today? I put my weight on my unsteady feet and step away from Tomoe. No. There is something I need to do. I stare straight at the corpse in the body bag. Her face is still exposed. Lifeless, expressionless. Her hair is long. Blonde. I imagine her with a bit of makeup. Some blush. Some lipstick. Some fake eyelashes. Whoever this was, she's exactly what I need for my next victim. Hmm. That worked out well. Can we get her into the van? Okay, I'll grab a trolley. Tomoe, give me a hand. Ugh, if I have to. I nod and whisper a small thanks to both of them. Still a little groggy and unstable, I make my way to the morgue store. I'll wait in the van for now. I need to take a moment to restore my energy. The real work will begin when we get to the factory. I know it's stream time now, but I feel like we only have like 30 minutes left. I hope. If anyone knows, let me know. We arrived at the factory after a brief pit stop at my apartment to collect my makeup kit. Jiro managed to fix the lock on the front entrance, meaning we don't have to try and shimmy a cadaver through the side window. Even found the proper key for the place on one of the rusted workbenches. Tomoe helped to drag a workbench to the center of the factory floor, and we hoisted the cadaver on top of it. Kodrio unwrapped it from the HRP, which he explained simply meant human remains pouch. Staring down at the body before me, I now begin to wonder why I freaked out so much at the morgue. It's just a body, a lifeless thing that was once somebody, but now has no meaning in its existence. Hmm, it's kind of gross, but it's not really that bad. It's warm in here, it's gonna start stinking. Ugh. I'm glad you've come around, but I still don't want nothing to do with it. Right, so we're here, we got your body, what now? I fetch my makeup kit from the floor beside the workbench and place it next to the corpse, and please do not put makeup that touches a corpse on your face. We are going to make this body look as close as possible to this girl. I flashed my phone at Kajiro and Tomoe, showing off the photo of Emmy Katsuno that was submitted to Corpse Girl's website. Right. But why? Because then we can photograph it and convince the victim, Emmy, that it's her own dead body. Is he like, you know their name? Why? I threw my brow. Kajiro coughs in an attempt to hide his laughter. That's how Corpse Girl does things. I don't know. Sounds like a shit plan. We went to all that effort to steal a dead body and you just want to take photos of it? Look, so far I've done everything with photo manipulation. And sometimes it's successful. Like with Akane Surumaki. That bitch? It convinced her to kill herself. But I'll admit that it hasn't worked so well on Corpse Girl's other victims. <laughs> So you think repeating the same thing that don't work over and over again will eventually work? 
She's got a point, Noriko. Corpse Girl doesn't have the best track record. Maybe something has to change. But... what? This is the way I've always done things, and... and... I hang my head in defeat. I don't know what to do. I spent all morning crafting fake photos of my three victims, but for what purpose? They're not going to convince anyone to kill themselves. And now I'm standing here in the factory, looking at a corpse that I want to decorate as Emmy Katsuno, just so I can take photographs of it. And there's no point in doing so. I already crafted the photo of Emmy's death, so why am I here? This is where the idea comes up. We put the makeup on, then we put it in front of her door. That's where it comes in. What the hell am I doing? You were right. I can't keep going on like this. I... I've already crafted a photo of this victim's death. So I... I really don't know why I let it get so far. I guess I didn't truly think we'd pull this off. I kind of just went along with Kojiro's suggestion to go to the morgue. Hey, don't pin it on me. This is your scheme. The weirdo is right. This is on you, Nariko. You're right. They're both spot on. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wasting my time. Their time. I'm wasting Corpse Girl's time. Here, give me your phone. Without waiting for approval, Tomoe snatches my phone out of my hands. She swipes past the photo of Emmy, then swipes back to it. Yo, you said you already made the corpse photo. Where is it? I don't keep it on my phone. That would be stupid. The only copy is still on my laptop at home. But you've got a photo of this bitch on your phone. Well, yeah. I just pulled it from her noise profile earlier. It's exactly the same image that was uploaded to Corpse Girl's website, though. Right, right. Hold it. How did you know the Vic's name? There you go. Corpse Girl doesn't ask for a name. Oh, uh, this girl... I actually went to school with her. It's yeah, a he's gonna be like a lot. You know, a lot of people that be do be dying. Are we just carrying out your murders? Uh huh. Uh, look, that doesn't matter, does it? Well, tell me what the corpse photo looks like. Um. Well, it wasn't my most creative work. I had three requests to fulfill in a short amount of time, so I kind of made them all similar. I made it look like this girl, Emmy. Fell from a tall building and splattered on the pavement. Fucking lame. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all of a sudden funny and enjoyable. Why did you want to know, anyway? Well, I've got an idea for you. I know, I'm just the driver and all, but you've dragged me in this far. So at least let me make a suggestion, Kay. Okay, go ahead. We've got this here body. You've got a corpse photo of the bitch all locked and loaded. Let's kick it up a notch. Take your time to apply makeup. Make the body really look like the victim. Send her the corpse photo first, and then we'll deliver this body to the bitch. Deliver the body? We rock a battered joint, leave the dead body on her doorstep, and then we fucking get out of there. Can you imagine how fucking scary it would be to come face to face with your own corpse? <laughs> Think about it from her perspective. She gets a photo of her own dead body, right? Then, like, hours later, just as she's trying to get it out of her mind, her own corpse shows up at her house. You got some dark thoughts, Tomoe. <laughs> She'll fucking snap, I guarantee it. Hell, I probably would too, and I know what's going on. I can't believe it. Tomoe has completely lost the plot. Her plan is incredibly devious. It's almost evil, and I'm in love with the idea. I'm in love with the idea of delivering a person's own corpse to them before they kill themselves. Despite my own nature, I find myself throwing myself at Tomoe and wrapping my arms around her. Oh, what the? I bury my head between her neck and shoulder, the warmth of her body radiating through my own cold, clammy form. I start to sob uncontrollably. Maybe I still have tears left over from my incident at the morgue, or maybe it's just truly happy at this moment. <laughs> Tomoe! Thank you. Are you okay? I keep asking that question like we're not playing a murder fantasy thing going on, but... I still have to ask it. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> Your idea is brilliant. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, I can't think of a better way to bring Corpse Girl's plans to fruition. <laughs> I mean, I just said the first thing that came to mind, so... But hey, I'm real glad you like the idea. I'm happy to help. I wipe my eyes, 
But don't let go of Tomoe. Hell. I wonder if you'd make a better corpus girl than me. Nah, <laughs> don't be stupid. I just had one good idea is all. No, oh, come on. It ain't like you to get all sappy. Pick yourself up, yeah? Right. In a moment. I nose my cheek further into my neck and feel her skin prickle underneath my breath. She tenses up a little, but doesn't push me away. You're so warm. Okay. Jeez. Come on now, we've got work to do. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I reluctantly step back from Tomoe and wipe my eyes. Tomoe is a little red in the face. She ruffles the collar of her shirt and fans her face. I never had a girl cling to me like that before. Better not tell Shinya in case he gets real jealous. <laughs> Kajiro is silent. He seems to be simply observing the moment. I take a second to compose myself. Tomoe is right. We do have work to do. I look to the corpse atop the table, patiently waiting for us to conclude our discussion. I almost wish I was as patient as the dead. We starting? Yes. Let's do this. Mad. Few things to keep in mind. Putting makeup on a cadaver isn't as simple as you think. That's it. Yep, that makes sense. This one's already decomposing. Not all the makeup will take. Ew. Put a little extra on. Don't be stingy. Ew. It doesn't help that the body is ice cold. Though if we had a space heater, we could warm it up. That would help the makeup stick. Yeah. But no, and make the stinky. Composition. And make the stinky. We can't have it decomposing any faster. It's already out of cold storage, so I imagine we don't have long as it is. Right. We're going to want to deliver it to your Vic soon. Like, less than 24 hours soon. That's fine. Yo, what about time in the delivery? Corpse Girl's photos have a... What's it called? A, a timestamp? Yeah, I timestamp the photos with a supposed time of death. I usually set it to a little after the time the victim receives the photo. Sometimes a few hours, sometimes a whole day. Uh-huh, I get it. Well, like, for best effect, we're gonna want to deliver the corpse before the time marked on the photo, right? Hmm. That way, the Vic gets the photo and the corpse before the set time. Creates a kind of ticking time bomb. Should convince him to off himself before time's up. That makes sense. I think that's the best you're, way to do it. You're all messed up in the head, being like, this is a cool idea. Yeah, so, um, what time did you write on this Emmy chick's corpse photo? I scratched my head and tried to think about it. It's hard to recall since I created three different photos at the same time. I'm pretty confident in laying them all up one after another. An hour gap in between each one. 7.28 a.m. tomorrow. We gotta deliver the corpse before then, huh? Oh, God, that's so early. Too early. Usually ah. asleep. Well, you're gonna have to get your ass up early for Noriko. For Corpse Girl. Kodrio groans, but he doesn't object further. So, I'll send the photo out when I get home tonight. Emmy will receive it before she goes to bed for the night. It should shake her a little. Then, in the morning, she'll wake up to her doorbell ringing and a corpse left on her doorstep. That should be enough to do the trick. I think you're both forgetting something. Where are we delivering the corpse? <laughs> Are you dense? We're delivering it to this Emmy bitch's home. <laughs> Say, yeah, put it together, Tomoe. None of us know where she lives, I think. Sure, of course. But where does she live? Got her address? Oh. Ah, oh, shit. A hole in the plan. A massive flaw that we completely overlooked. Our son's silence is the only answer to Kojiro needs. This whole thing is a bust. Kinda <clears throat> disappointed in you, Noriko. Thought Corpse Girl was some mastermind, some genius worth worshipping. I don't have a response to that comment. Bile begins to rise my throat as a pit opens up inside my stomach. Turns out everything so far has been sheer luck. Well, I'm out. Use the factory if you want, but I'm not sticking around. Kajiro waves half-heartedly and walks away. I can't say anything to stop him. My thoughts are frozen, locked in place. Chained down by humiliation and anxiety. Hold up just one fucking second. Of course, Tomoe never fails to grab somebody's attention. Kojiro turns back. We're just getting started here. Of course there's gonna be hiccups. We'll iron out all the details as we go. She's all rearing to go for this now. Don't just abandon Noriko like that. Corpse Girl has done more for me than you'll ever know. That's so? Yeah, 
It is, so I'm gonna stand by her side. If you're a coward, feel free to bow out now. But if Noriko means anything to you, anything at all, then just swallow your fucking doubts and help her out. Come on. I never thought she'd be the one to make a rousing speech. Short and simple though it was. Right. Suppose we did make a deal after all. Though, nothing really stopping me from taking cadavers from the morgue whenever I want now. Still, I guess I'll help you out. But if this keeps going astray, I really will walk away. Fine, but follow through on this one victim at least. I managed to gather up enough strength to make a simple plea. Please, I can't do this without you. Hmm, okay. Okay. Find Emmy's address. If Tomoe drives, I'll handle moving the corpse in the morning. I nod firmly. Okay, I'll work it out. Thank you, Kojiro. Kojiro waves once again and takes his leave. The heavy steel door at the front of the factory slams shut behind him. Okay, got any ideas? Maybe one. Can you call Shinya? Ask him if he remembers Emmy Katsuno from school. And see if he knows where she lives. Why would he know? Shinya? Oh, yeah. He said once that you went to school together. Guess he might know Emmy too, huh? My thoughts exactly. I'm going to make a call as well. Emmy should, or, uh, Shinya really is, like, the linchpin in all of this. He happens to have resources for everything. I quickly make a call to Aoi. As the phone is ringing, I look up at the skylight above. The sun has nearly disappeared from the sky and we're running out of light. If there was electricity connected here, we wouldn't have... A problem, but it gets much darker than this if we're going to struggle to apply makeup to the cadavers. Noriko? Hey, me again. <laughs> Feels like we just spoke this morning, hey? It was this morning. <laughs> She's so precious. Uh, yeah. Listen, just a quick question. Do you remember Emmy Katsuna from school? Katsuna? Okay, that's really freaky, Noriko. Huh? What if? She just ran into her at the mall. I bumped into Katsuno just today at the mall. Uh, you're kidding. I'm serious. She was pretty distressed, actually. She just got fired from her job. I see. Actually, it's kind of funny. I spoke with you about Corpse Girl's website this morning, and I spoke to Katsuno about it. Holy today. shit! Like there's someone she wanted dead, maybe. I'm not sure. Perhaps her boss that fired her? Hmm, interesting. Why are you asking about her anyway? Uh, it's an odd question, but do you happen to know where she lives? Yes. Wait, seriously? Mm-hmm. Want me to send you How her address? Are you going to visit her? How do you know where she lives? Oh, Howie. If you could send her address, then I'll really owe you one. Oh, sure. I'll text it through. <laughs> I didn't think you'd actually know it, but I wanted to ask anyway. No problem. I followed her home today oh. from the mall, so I guess it worked out well for you. Hang on. How we followed Amy home from the mall? Like, she stalked her? What did you say? That's creepy, because now she's going to be worried that they're gonna think Owie killed her. Oh, I followed Emmy home today. I got in the train carriage behind hers. Well, don't worry. She didn't see me. Owie? What are you talking about? Well, I wanted to find out if she was going to use Oh my god, Owie! Since I recommended it to her and all. I... I don't know what to say. Hey, I'm still at work, okay? I shouldn't really be talking on the phone. We'll chat later. Bye bye. Oh, wait, wait. D don't hang up. Oh boy. The phone call ends abruptly. I'm baffled by the fact that Aoi followed Emmy home. I can't quite figure out what must have been going through her head at the time. She wants to know if it fucking works. But right now, I don't have the time to worry about it. I need to finish up here at the factory. I notice that I have an unread message on my phone. I open up to find Aoi has sent me Emmy's full address. Well, at least we got the address. You got it? Nice. Shinya barely remembered the chick, apparently, so it wasn't really helpful, sorry. No trouble. We got what we needed. Just spreading out all your lines of people like, Oh, yes. Th these two people asked me about that girl the other day. Not, 
Not suspicious at all. It's getting dark. Help me put some makeup on the corpse. Gross. Okay. Show me that photo of Emmy again. But we better do this. Now she's all wanting to be involved. Like she was like, I don't want to touch the corpses. Right. Here. I bring up the phone and we examine it closely before setting to work. By the time I get home, I'm completely drained. I barely have energy to open the front door. Today was an ordeal. It dragged me on forever and ever, and yet it still felt like I didn't have enough time to get anything done. After changing out of my vomit-stained clothes, I make myself a cup of tea. I'm hoping a few sips will help me relax and unwind. I sit down on the couch, cup in hand. When it's cool enough to drink, I take a sip and feel a bit of today's pressure lift from my shoulders. My laptop is sitting next to me. I know I shouldn't bite off more than I choose today. If I check for new requests, I'll probably regret it. I unfold the laptop and navigate to Corpse Girl's website. One new request. Shit. These are really beginning to pile up. I can't restrain myself from opening the request. The request came in while I was busy with Kojiro and Tomoe, probably around the same time we were at the morgue. The image of the victim downloads. Ha! Wait, I didn't think she actually used it. I don't remember. I don't remember that, that part if she actually used it, but apparently. It is her older sister! Ah! I was right. I stare intently at the picture of my older sister, Yuriko Kurosawa. 28 years old, senior high school dropout, currently on parole after a short second stint in prison. Yuriko, what are the odds of you appearing here on my screen in my life at this moment? Man, you know everyone that dies here. I haven't spoken to you in for so long. I, I haven't seen you. I haven't even received contact from you, only to ignore it. Why are you here now? Why does somebody want you dead? I suppose it's not hard to think why someone would request your death. I'm sure you have a lot of enemies thanks to the crew you run with. But for someone to actually use Corpse Girl's website to request your death, it's coincidental. Too coincidental. Just like everything that's been happening lately. Yuriko, I hate you so much. You abandoned me when I needed you. You abandoned Mother, even though she abandoned us first. I hate you. Corpse Girl never refuses a request. It's one of her convictions. I'll never refuse a request. I close the laptop's lid and rub my eyes. We still haven't figured out who requested my death. I'm tired. I'm so fucking tired. She's dead. Splattered in the flower bed. Oh shit. It already happened. Probably matches the photo you sent. Wish I'd seen that. Thanks, Kojiro. And thank Tomoe for me. No problem. Where are you anyway? Parking lot across the road. Perfect view of her apartment. Why would you be there? Man, these people are not smart. Uh, people are coming outside. Must have heard the splat. Bad. We better gun it. See ya. Okay. Bye. I hang up the phone and smile fight and a smile fights its way across my tired face. They just left the body there? Because they can just be ID'd. Right? They'd be like, wait a minute, that, that's actually not her. Amy Katsuno is dead. She killed herself thanks to the trauma of discovering her own corpse at her doorstep. Even though I forgot to send the corpse photo last night, I nearly fucked up our entire plan due to how exhausted I was. By some stroke of luck, I managed to wake up early this morning. Thankfully, my first thought upon waking up was to send the photo. Amy would have received the picture only an hour before the time marked on it. It was a close call. A very close call. But I can't help but wonder if it worked in our favor. Kojiro, Tomoe rushed over. Kojiro and Tomoe rushed over to her apartment to deliver the corpse, forcing Emmy into a confrontation with the photo, an imminent time of her death, and then delivery of her own corpse all in the space of an hour worked to our advantage. It worked so well that I'm starting to consider making this our mo regular mode of operation. I glance at the burner phone on top of the coffee table. Since Emmy is already dead, there's no point in me wait waiting 24 hours to discard it. I'll get rid of it right away. After that, I'll have to figure out what to do about the other remaining requests. I still have two photos of victims that I crafted on the same day I made Emmy's photos. With all the urgency of plotting Emmy's demise, I didn't have a chance to send them. I'll have to edit them a little bit because the timestamps on them are now out of date. But that's okay. It's a quick fix. Dude. <laughs> the police are gonna be like, yo. Four girls in this one place have died in a week. And then there's a request for Yuriko Kurosawa. I'll need to deal with that too. Eventually. I 
I kind of was thinking that was going to be the end. A quiet morning at the library is just what I need to escape from the chaotic whirlwind that I've been trapped in for a few days or weeks. Fuck! And this is a whole new day. I'm gonna save. Because it's 10.30. At normal stream time. Um, some of the other uh, time to beat times were uh, around 10 hours. So I'm at 9-ish right now. I don't want to see any spoilers by looking up anything, but if I only have like 30 minutes, I kind of want to just, you know, continue on with it. Um, let's see. How long to be the corpse factory? All right. Main story is seven and a half hours. Main and extra is 10. I'm well over seven and a half. Maybe that doesn't include the first part. There's multiple endings. Holy shit. This person's main story is that they're five hours. Nine hours, 11 hours. Hmm. 12 hours. That's for completionist. Hmm. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. I am going to end stream here. Because, uh, let's go title. Because I think, ah, see, more people get added. Why is Owie there? Um, that's creepy. Let's see. The reason why I'm gonna end here is because if I understand correctly, um, from what I just saw, is there's there some person mentioned true ending. So there's multiple endings. I don't know how difficult it would be to get them, obviously. But my thought is, I think I probably have like an hour left, maybe. Because if we're nine hours in and like 10 hours is like the main plus extras. So we got maybe another hour. I don't know if that includes the first part of the game. The preamble, demo, whatever it is called. Um, and then... Uh, we have like true endings depending on how difficult those are so like if the next time we play it if it only ends up being like 30 minutes we could probably see what it takes to check out some other endings or something i don't know um but i would hate to wait over the weekend to finish this i have to continue playing on monday so i'll think about that i don't know if um i'll wait maybe we'll finish it tomorrow or something for like a bonus stream uh because i took tuesday off we, we could we could do that um i won't play it this weekend uh this weekend i have planned the uh magic the gathering stream stuff and uh you guys can play some tunes and stuff and then if i do put this off to monday uh that could be oh, excuse me a nice buffer for me to find out what game we're gonna play next anyways so that's a possibility um i guess you know, if you're not part of the discord already <laughs> join the discord that's where i do most of my uh stream updates here you go there's, there's a link um that's where i do uh, most of my announcements for stream and stuff occasionally i do them on twitter um uh, but discord is generally where i'll post that stuff so i guess we'll find out together uh what we're gonna do with this game but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me um this game has been a wild ride i still want to know who requested my death I have no leads anymore.
this gallery? Oh. I missed some things. Actually, look, there's... This was... This was somewhat... Re oh, you guys can't see. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Oop. There we go. Um, This photo was somewhat recent. And we still have quite a bit here. I wonder if these were some of my decisions that I missed or something. Well, no, look. Are these out of order? Because, oh, maybe that was just a reused one. I just don't remember putting on makeup before. Um, so it does look like we still have some time uh, left. So maybe that's what we'll deal with. Um, maybe we'll do a whole new episode, whatever, coming in the future. But thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I don't know uh, what lies in future in the next few days but uh like i said join the discord hang out find out uh there but appreciate you guys being here remember to spay new to your pets adopt a shop donate to risk if you can afford it or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering that is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and races out that are very much in need anyways i'm basic thank you so much for letting me be your streamer tonight i heavily appreciate it i'll catch you all next time see ya Kada! Kada, wake up Come on, yeah, it's booty time, let's go.